Well, the heat is on, both figuratively and literally. 91 feels like 97 down there on the diamond. And there were no clouds like there were last night. The wind is blowing in, and it's blowing from right field to left field, but in. Eddie Park, Tim Tawa, and Brock Jones, freshman, senior, sophomore, get things started for the Cardinal. Loser is out. Winner gets NC State on Friday. Oh. Park 279 doesn't have any homers. Six RBI. They are not a team that will, but in fact, risk averse or just unwilling to go there, like morally unacceptable through the first five innings is the way that David Eshley put it, which I thought was funny. I, I've never heard it described that way, <laughs> although I don't have any issue with it whatsoever. <laughs> now, it's a, it's a very offensive team. And historically, I mean, when you look at West Coast offenses, home runs are usually not the first thing you think of, but the two that are here, Arizona and Stanford, both are that. It's two of the best and most complete offenses in the country. Cardinal 80 home runs this season. First breaking pitch was outside two and one fastball on the ground backhanded at third and no it's not Jason Gonzalez who has made 13 errors this year. It's going to be a difficult play with Park heading to first and Stanford has the leadoff man on. Playing off the line right here fastball away. Hits it off the end of the bat. I don't know if Gonzalez was going to get him or not. He's going to take. Extraordinary throw going away from the bag to get a speedy park headed to first. They're still going to score an error. Yep. Official score E5, 14th error of the year for Jason Gonzalez. And here is the senior, Tim Tawa, 287. Good contact guy, 12 homers, 39, runs batted in. And swings there, and that shows you what that breaking ball may present tonight. It's the combination of the breaking ball and something that we did not have to deal with last night. In the Mississippi State game, and it's the shadows. We well, got to realize too, Vanderbilt's played at night. Stanford hasn't yet, and so these. The, I mean, the the visuals for Stanford's hitters. This is the first time that they've been in this environment. Park doesn't have a stolen base yet this year, and he's not going here. And that's through the hole. That's right between Gonzalez and Young, and a good start for Stanford. Error and a single for Tawa. Two on, nobody out. Didn't look good on the curveball on that first pitch. Like he didn't see spin, and then all of a sudden they go with the fastball and try to sneak it by him. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised he came back heater after the, the first swing yeah. that you saw from Tawa. I mean, clearly he did not see the spin on the breaking ball. They come back and go heater, and, and this is a team that can hit the fastball. I mean, 94, 95, 96. If they know it's coming, they can put it in play. Stanford with the first two on of the game. Yeah, and this is the three hitter, the best player on their team, Brock Jones. He was making tackles for the football team on special teams and it was a safety and then he opted to say I'm just going to focus on baseball and man has he been terrific 17 homers 59 RBI and the first fastball he sees is down ball one. Jason Gonzalez at third base playing a step in front of the bag really surprised especially with Brock Jones three hole hitter Stanford will not give outs away early in games. Three home runs in a game against Texas Tech in the Super Regional and the 1 0. Boy, that's a good change up. 86, one ball, one strike. So we've seen the fastball 96, curveball that was disappearing on Tawa, and now a change up. Yeah, I've seen them all. I mean, he, he, he can show you a curveball and a slider. Sometimes they'll go together a little bit, but all three have a chance to be plus pitches. The, the change up really plays up against left handers. Big early test for Christian Little, the 17 year old, one and one, gets him again. Another one that buried itself in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. That's nasty right there. Look at the numbers off the curveball 135. I'll tell you right now, don't expect a fastball right, right here, one, two. Vanderbilt defense has turned 37 double plays. Getting support from his mates. Three in a row. Three changeups. Now, if he does get a fastball, it's going to be a waste pitch fastball up in the zone. Nothing that Brock Jones 
should be able to get to or even go after. It's just to change the eyesight to then set it up either for the change up or the curveball. Christian Little's last two appearances, his ERA was just 180 with a whip of 070. Everything has been down to Brock Jones, and we're even at two and two. Jack Leiter got taken out by Terrell Tatum late in the game, in which he had a no hitter. In fact, the last couple of nights we've had no hitters broken up by home runs. And the team that hit the home runs ended up winning 2 2. And this one, line shot, caught, and he threw it away. Patrick Nolan threw it into right field, and Park's going to round, and that's a huge error here from Parker Nolan. And it's 1 0 Stanford. Wow. He really didn't have a play. Park was standing right on second base when Nolan turned and threw it. And Carter Young wasn't expecting it. I tell you where he had a play was at first. He had a play at first. Tyler was far enough off. They may have had a chance. And then this is where the game starts spinning. Vanderbilt is not a team that makes a lot of, of errors. You got an error to start the ball game. And now this one, which totally changes the inning. Potentially could have been a double play. Ball thrown away. Park comes around to score from second base, and the Cardinals on the board. Yeah, and Tawa now moves down to second base. So a man in scoring position. And that's not helping your starting pitcher, Little. In the dirt to Cody Huff. This reminds me a lot of Vanderbilt's last game where they also struggled in the first inning making def defensive mistakes until they settled down. So they got Jones to line out. And here's Huff. Five homers, 37 RBIs, a 269 average. Boy, they have had a couple of rough swings at that pitch in the dirt. Curveball early, change up there. If you're looking for an early exam, Christian Little's getting it here in Omaha at the College World Series. His team has let him down behind him, two errors to start. Has to let Little know you got 20 seconds to throw a pitch, so they're sending a warning out to him. Balls and a strike, and he was certainly not any quicker after the warning. So he's going to call his catcher, CJ Rodriguez, out just to make sure they're on the same page with the runner on second base. Yeah, I mean he he was he was looking in for science for a good 10 seconds. So I don't know how many times that CJ Rodriguez had to go through the cycle, but clearly it wasn't anything that Christian Little either recognized right away or now they should be on the same page. Weird start for Vandy. You don't see this very much. Outfield in right, especially Isaiah Thomas Fang playing shallow. You see the center fielder Enrique Bradfield, who was an all SEC first teamer and an all defensive player. The 2 1 to Huff. Runner goes to third. They will throw it there. Oh, it hit him in the helmet, if not the shoulder. And he is okay, but the ball was thrown on the inside of third, and Gonzalez was on the outside of third base. So it looks like, thankfully, Tawa is okay. That was a great jump. I mean, he took he took two hops. Little never turned around. Tawa got a great start, and oh, it got him in the shoulder. I was with you. I thought I thought it got him in the uh, yeah. helmet on the way in. Cardinal being aggressive right now, and watch Vandy right here. They are playing the infield, actually the middle of the infield back. They're conceding here the run. Two and two needs a strikeout, and he won't get it there. A good spoil. Tommy Nicholson, the third base coach, will bare hand play to fire Take that. It, Tommy. Yeah. He played in this thing too, Texas. Tell you what, with two strikes right here, 2 2, I'm a little surprised that Vandy's playing back. 
that's a sign to their offense that they will be scoring runs this evening. Puff on the ground. Gonzalez will come home with it. Nice play, and he is able to nail Tim Tawa. Boy, it just for all intents and purposes felt like they were going to concede and go to first, and he opted to come home. Watch the footwork right here of Gonzalez. Works a little to his left and squares himself up. Three-quarter throw. Has to throw it to the right shoulder of Rodriguez so it can tail back and be a strike right there just to catch and tag. Nicely done by Jason Gonzalez. A perfect throw. And that brings up Christian Robinson. So it stays one zip. Huff at first. So down the road, and Christian Little is asked, so how did your first inning at the College World Series go? What do you remember about it? I mean, think about what's occurred here in the first 15 minutes. I did not look like that when I was 17 years old. <laughs> no. 210, 6'4. I wasn't too off, too far off of the 210 piece. <laughs> Just a different build. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brad Field calls off the right fielder Thomas, and he's there. A lot of stuff going on from just one run to score. Only one hit, two errors for Vanderbilt. We'll see the Commodores for the first time when we come back. Oldie, but a goodie there, the old mustache competition, given that Stanford's here. The commercial department locked in tonight to this one. Time now to take a look at our batting order. It's brought to you by Capital One. The straw that stirs it all is right there. Enrique Bradfield, Jr. Carter Young, the shortstop, got some pop. So does Dominic Keegan. Troy Leneve got into the lineup late. Isaiah Thomas, Parker Nolan, C.J. Rodriguez, the catcher. Javier Vaz and Jason Gonzalez with power in the ninth spot. He was the offensive hero for them in game one. They're looking at Quinn Matthews, the lefty. That stuff's going to be a little bit different for Matthews because he's going to be 88, 91, live right in there. The changeup is, is key. He's got to live down where Little can throw that fastball at the top part of the zone. Matthews is a guy that really has to live at the bottom part of the zone. When he gets into trouble, a lot of times it's it's just excitement. He gets a little bit too fired up. Baseball comes up in the zone, and that's when he gets knocked around. We should know early. If the ball's down, the changeup has good arm side sink. Matthew's got a chance to be out there for a while. And unlike Stanford, Vandy will sacrifice. They will bunt. Bradfield, that's a shot right past the drawn in. Drew Bowser at third base. And just like Stanford, leadoff man aboard. Hard hit for Enrique Bradfield. And now you really get a chance to see what he can do. He leads the nation in steals with 46. And I think he's going to be a lot more aggressive tonight than he was in game one when he got on base three times and did not steal. You look at the numbers up there, 46 stolen bases. The percentage is high. The aggressiveness is good. We're going to find out with the move to see if Matthews can hold Bradfield there and keep him off balance at first. So we've seen Carter Young bat from the left side. He is a switch hitter. He dealt with a dislocated shoulder back May 18th and now starting to feel better. And they will throw over to keep an eye on Bradfield. There is not a player in the country that changes the course of an inning more than Bradfield does. When he is on first base, everybody knows exactly where it is. You speed up your mind a little bit on the mound, but he is a game changer just out there. Not only stealing bases, but speeding everybody else up. Try to push bunt and again. They will do that no matter what order you are in the batting order. All right, I don't like that play. Reason being, don't give away an out. You're already down one. Plus, you have speed at first. Let the speed work for you. I understand he's trying to push it over there, not as a sacrifice, but trying to get over. He's going to get fastballs, especially with Bradfield at first. Matthews, an ERA of 6.15. His record is 5 and 2. This is his 14th start, 17th appearance, 60 innings, 54 strikeouts, 30 walks. A lot of folks that watched Vanderbilt's game the other night, they had Bradfield on first a couple of times and frustrated he never went, never challenged 
He's talking about the timing of the pitcher. He stole four bases against Georgia Tech in the regional final. He hasn't attempted one in four games since then. He was going backwards and Matthew threw that one outside. That field attempted 52 and he was successful 46 times. The freshman of the year in the SEC. Lead has grown a little bit. Not going and Young on an off speed. Fouls it back one and two off balance on that swing. Cody Huff behind the plate has thrown out 16 of 46 base dealers. Matthews getting some early throws in both to the plate and to first base. He's got sleeves on. It feels like 97 degrees out there. It's a big lead right there. He's going. And that's foul out of play. So Eddie you know all the great base dealers who played alongside him when Ricky Henderson was on first or Kenny Lofton who Bradfield has been compared to. Did they really worry what the time was from the pitcher to the plate. Not really but they were great at being able to pick up nuances that the pitchers did righties and lefties. Got a left handed first baseman also, so it's a lot easier for Bruiser to go over, get the baseball, attack, attack it to be able to have a clear lane and a clear shot at Bradfield Jr., who is really fast. He's got a big lead. This is a one way. He can definitely go on first move, and I think he can still make it. Not going there, and all that, and he gets Carter Young to swing at a changeup. You're going to see these to both righties and lefties for Matthews and when he's going this is the one that really helps him go so fastball's been 90 91 arm speed on the changeup is good good sink away from Carter Young first out of the game for Quinn Matthews a strikeout. So again the two errors for Vanderbilt and then Young remember did try to get a bunt down on the first pitch and he was unsuccessful so fundamentally a bumpy start for the Commodores tonight. Here's Keegan. Dominic Keegan, highest average, 358, 14 homers, second on the team. Get 66 strikeouts to only 26 walks. Vanderbilt team will strike out a lot, and he got back that time. It was a little closer. Hadn't seen that one. Huh. Went to the quick one. That's a scary one when you're at first base because you're already you already know the kick. The leg kick to first. But the, the quick step off is the big issue. Oh, oh he may have got him. He that, did. That's the big problem right there. Look. Yep. I had the honor of being in the dugout with Lou Brock at first it, it, during spring training. And this is one thing he told me. Watch on the left, the throw to first. Look at his right. Look at on the right. You see the left heel. See it right there how it comes up. The spike comes up. Look on the right. That's when he goes home. So left he goes to first, right he goes home. That's all you have to look at. A lot of young runners look at the leg kick. Look at the right foot instead. You look at the left one. That'll tell you when he's going over to first. That's what Lou Brock taught me when I was with the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm telling you, if you're a young player and you want to steal bases against left-handed pitching, that's what you look for now. He had such a big lead 
Yeah, but that quick step off, there's no chance exactly. of coming back from that. Exactly. It, it, that's, I mean, and from up here, you can really see it. The cut of the grass here is a, it's a big cut. It is a wide cut. And that right foot was all the way out to the cut. If the quick one is, well, as quick as it is right there, that's the only chance you got to pick him off. In 1974 with St. Louis, Lou Brock that Eddie's talking about, if you don't know who he is or what he did, he stole 118 bases that year. He stole 938 in his 19 year career. And he is so fast, he doesn't need to take a big no. lead. Not that big. And now 2 2, and that sails high to Keegan. Very strange beginning to this one for Vanderbilt, who won the championship in 19 and 14. Three two and that's spinning. It's going to spin foul. So was that Matthews doing what a pitcher will do in the sense that he didn't show him his best moves. You know the first five or six times you threw over and then all of a sudden you saw something different. If, well here's the thing right so if he's got a one way lead. He's he's trying to read what it looks like when you go into first when he lifts, and he goes and lifts and lifts and lifts enough, and I it would appear to me, and I would assume it's on the scouting report to say, hey, he's got a quick step off too, but Bradfield kept getting longer as he kept getting more comfortable with the leg lift. Well, that's great. Let him get all the way out there and then show him that quick one. Mm -hmm. Three, two. He got him swinging in the dirt, and Matthews after the leadoff single. Picks off right field, strikes out Young and Keegan. Welcome back after that first inning, Christian Little and pitching coach Scott Brown for Vanderbilt in a very heated conversation. Little complaining and Scott Brown trying to tell him, let it go, let it go, move on. But the two kept going out at Scott Brown eventually said, you keep this up and it's going to be a really short outing for you. They let five minutes go by. Brown came back, was able to calm him down. Now he's back out there. Mm, interesting. 17 year old graduated high school a year early. They had to adjust the high school baseball practices because he didn't have his license and his folks had to drive him to practice. He pours in a fastball at 94. He was the number three high school prospect if he was going to be part of the class of 2021, but he reclassified to 2020. Now that's a great start. Fastball, curveball. He, by the way, had been a Vandy commit since 2014, and it was the COVID pandemic which actually allowed him to manage. Remotely, if it weren't for COVID, he likely wasn't going to be able to get it done. Oh, no. no swing there. He came to Vanderbilt in January. Everybody else had already been there, obviously. He came in January, so you got a 17 year old kid joining a program where they've been playing for a while, new environment, classes, etc. And he calls him on the swing. So KP you you know Brownie really well the pitching coach for Vanderbilt he's going to win that argument every time what do you think the conversation I know you weren't there what do you think it was about well I mean based on what Chris just said about let it go I mean maybe it was a reaction to the to the defensive component of it I, I don't know or maybe it's just let the last inning go. Um, I mean listen man Scott Brown's from New York um, and he's not afraid to jump you. If that's got to be the case, and and I don't care how old you are, that's that's his job. So I liked that he came back afterwards, and whatever he said, the uh, early start here to the second little looks pretty darn good. Third baseman. Oh, and two. This kid is going to be a major leaguer if his trajectory gets to where people yeah. think it is. The freshman. I think we're going to see this matchup a lot at the next level. <laughs> 0 oh, 2 right field and going back is Isaiah Thomas. Now he finds it and he can't get it. That's odd because the sun isn't there and the wind is. And he misplayed that. So if the conversation to Little was let's forget the first inning and if it was involving the defense, he got hurt again here. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so last night, two nights ago, it's 2 0. 
Th this this ball is a no doubt home run to right field. Bowser's got real opposite field power. The wind is howling in from the south, so it's coming in directly from right field. And you could see. I, I think that. Thomas was playing that ball like he had the first two games here, thinking it was going to go a lot further, and then when he went back and looked, he went in close. Well, we'll credit Bowser with the double, so he's at second. And after getting ahead of him, Bowser put it up in the air, bounces that one short. Like of a block, right there. Then C.J. Rodriguez behind the plate, known not only for his arm but a great side to side, being able to block pitches. He's seen some really good sliders with this staff. Think of the staff that, that he has to handle. I mean, you, you've got <laughs> Rocker, Lighter, this kid. Here's the kicker. You know who would be throwing in this game if he hadn't signed? Ryan Weathers. <laughs> Ryan Weathers was in the same class. He would be a junior right now. That would be a pretty decent one, two, three, four. Yeah, it would. Now everything was going well for him throwing strikes hitting his spots missed on that 0 2 pitch right down the middle but now runner on base another mistake by the defense and the game slows down for him and this is most likely what Brownie was on and let just let it go just focus on what you do and go after the hitters. That's a good pitch two and one may maybe one of the things that happens though after the half inning when the team comes in is Corbin gets the team together and says we got to focus here. Two errors and a misplayed ball with a 17 year old kid making his first start in Omaha you're putting a lot of pressure on your own guy. Oh. Here's the other thing I. I Three one. From an offensive standpoint I always if, if it's a freshman or a young kid out there I always want to get him in the stretch. Because think about this, the, the, when he was in high school, he's not thrown out of stretch very much. Because there's nobody ending up on first base. It's just something that they haven't had a long time to to do as much. Now, three-one fastball right there throws it right by right by Tommy Troy. But we'll see. I mean, if you can get him in the stretch, a lot of times mentality is a little bit different. The other thing, obviously, that errors and misplayed balls do. Yeah. They fire that pitch count up. He's at 33 with one down here. Center fielder Bradfield very shallow against Troy who's got 10 homers 3 2 good take look good for a while broke out of the zone Troy's aboard that's a really good take that's that's an excellent pitch absolutely this is nine out of ten times that the hitter swinging at that especially with the shadows the situation. Great at bat by Tommy Troy. One man down. Here's the shortstop, Adam Crampton, the sophomore, hit 288 this year. Six foot 178 out of Oakland, California. Jason Gonzalez in. Bowser only one stolen base. Out at second base. Travis Katzenmeyer addressing Crampton who said is that high and he said no that is not high. And it's 0 and 1. <laughs> Little went to Christian Brothers College High School a commuter school. In St. Louis, the same school that produced the Brewers, Devin Williams. Williams, of course, arguably the best changeup at the major league level. Airbender. Bill's got a pretty good one himself. Hampton's the ninth hitter. There have been, I think, in the first part of this game, 
Some of the most uncomfortable swings we've seen all week. Yes, you did. Strikeout number two. And again, another hesitant, uncomfortable approach from a Cardinal batter. Having a hard time picking up what Little's putting down. Yeah, this is back to that break ball right here, and Crampton gets those hands started and just can't stop it. That's that one. If they don't pick spin up right away, I mean, Tommy Troy did. He took a really good 3 2 break ball, but that time Crampton couldn't lay off. Two strikeouts in the inning for Little. Back to the top, Eddie Park reached on an error. First time up. Two on for Stanford, leading one zip. Park, the freshman from San Jose at 6'1, 185. And the 1 0 to him at the knees. One ball, one strike. Side. So we got an error. We got a guy running a third who was hit in the shoulder with a ball as he stole the base. We got two errors, a ball misplayed out and right. A warning for a pitcher with a 22nd. If you're looking for a crisply played game to start, we haven't had it. Not quite yet. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes, two and two. I didn't mention that the best base dealer in the country was picked off first. So if you're looking for action, there's been a ton of that. See if Little can get out of this. Two on, two outs, two and two. And to left field towards the line, going over, diving and making the play is Javier Vaz. Bradfield comes over to congratulate him. Little points out to his left fielder. A huge play from Javier Vaz. The defense saved him right here now. Let him down early in the game. But Javier Vaz, who's just been starting for about two weeks, changes the ball game right there. Lays out. Vandy still trails it by one. We're playing Troy Lanive first pitch. He fouls one into row number one and it gets into the camera well there. Bottom of the second inning, Vanderbilt and Stanford just underway here. Omaha, Nebraska, the College World Series. And these two playing an elimination game. They've lost one already. You only get two before you go home. Ooh, that boy. Vanderbilt's lineup was adjusted late in the season. They moved Troy Leneve into the DH spot and they put Javier Vaz in left field. Things seemed to click at that point. That's in there for a strike. One ball, two strikes. One and two. Leneve out of Western Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh, six foot two ten. Easy take. He and Will Bednar, Mississippi State, both from Western PA.
Got him. And that is strikeout number three in a row for Quinn Matthews. Well, that changeup is money. You usually see lefties be able to dominate with the changeup to right handed hitters. They have reverse splits, is what you call it. But this, throwing it to left handed hitters like you alluded to earlier on, changing from in and out really works. That one, glove side. Yeah, I mean he's he's got the ability to throw the changeup down on both sides of the plate. Uh, that is his best swing and miss pitch. We've we've already seen it so far, and if that's the case, you got to make sure you throw it to both guys. Matthews now punched out three in a row. Not necessarily known as a strikeout guy either. Just 55 strikeouts, 61 and a third coming in. Isaiah Thomas, he's the right fielder, the junior, a 321 batting average, pops straight up. It's Tawa. The second baseman. And a little late step, but he's there for out number two. Well, you've seen a couple of balls hit up in the air. They're going to be adventures. The wind looks like it's blowing around 15 to 20, right to left. Ish. Ish. Papers in the booth getting blown all over the place. Yeah. Jerseys are flying. It'll be a challenge for an on camera tonight. Good news is we've got the same shirts on. Parker Noland. And Matt goes to the seats. Did that nearly break a window? Is that what you were looking at? There's a loud noise over there. No. Yeah. I was just gazing. <laughs> mm hmm. Breaking ball in there. Quinn Matthews seems to be finding himself a little pattern. Back up the middle, Nolan is going to be aboard. Second hit for Vanderbilt with two down. See if they get a little magic here with Nolan aboard. David Macias, the first base coach right there for Vanderbilt, yeah. immediately to Nolan say, hey, he's, he's, he's got to step off now. <laughs> Just want to make sure you know he's pretty good. You probably have seen it. Yeah. We don't need to go too far here. That step off move, by the way, was effective enough that it picked off Enrique Bradfield, and that was the first time all year that Bradfield had been picked off. It's the guy that's got 46 stolen bases. Everyone's aware of him. That was. The first time this season that he has been picked off. Trying to lure you to sleep with this move, and then he'll put stuff in. Oh! Come on, man. I feel talking to Javier Vaz. Better get that name right because his grandmother Sonia, watching Manatee, Puerto Rico. Um, let us know about it. You're going to hear about it if you don't. Oh, yeah. Rodriguez to third. Nice play over there. And Bowser with a cannon. Boy, get used to that name. Drew Bowser. Nice play to his left. And a hose to get Rodriguez. Gets there. Oh. What a beautiful double play. This one into left field. Park coming up. Sharply hit the third. Williams will come home for the fourth. Beautiful. Big go. Montour turns two. Some of the web gems we've seen, and we got another one already tonight in our bag. That wind blowing that ball away from Javier Vaz, and he was able to make the play. And then how about Drew Bowser? Eddie impressed with the clock he had. Didn't get up, rush it. Dewey had that arm and he made the play. Here's the first one popped up to Bradfield. An easy play and a quick one pitch out, which is just what Christian Little wanted to Tawa. So you think about the guys you're watching tonight and who will be at the next level, not including Rocker Lighter, who aren't on the field. 
Really good chance Little ends up in the big leagues. This is another one of those guys that likely is going to end up there in Brock Jones. It's an exciting player now. Just a sophomore, draft eligible next year, has now made the decision to go only baseball, but he shows you everything you want to see speed, power, the feet work, the arm works, uh, and he's a leader too. I mean, he is absolutely one of the leaders on this club. A freakishly good athlete went to Stanford, and Stanford's produced a few two way players. Beyond Kyle Peterson, who has taken the golf game to the next level with his baseball. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering what. I thought Elway, Peterson, Decent. Yeah. John Lynch, Johnny Lynch, Chad Hutchinson, yeah. Toby Gerhardt, oh. Mark Marquis years ago. You're just a late bloomer. Two balls and a strike. That was a good breaking ball. Didn't get the benefit of the call. And now he's behind Jones, three and one. Base runners have gotten on. The game has slowed. This is the one you got to be careful with. Three one. Now the wind's blowing in. I mean, Jones has got the ability to drive it through that wind to right, but you're still going to have to hammer one to right to get it out. Three one. He may have. This one is deep. Thomas going back. He did well. Ooh. Off the back side of the ball. And Brock Jones, who when he hits him, hits him in bunches, has his 18th this year. 2-0 Cardinal. Yeah, that's cutting through the wind right there. Keeping it low. Just right through. It was loud. You talk about the leadership. You talk about the power right there. Fastball up in the zone. Just throws the hat on it. 3 1 heater to that guy. He can make you pay, and he does right there. Covers that fastball, drives it out to right field, and adds another one to the Stanford lead. Hunt. That cat's going to make a lot of money playing this game now. <laughs> Head coach David Esker describes him as a once in a career guy. Once in a career guy. Esker played on the 87 team that won a World Series. He's been around Stanford now for a while, was at Cal forever. And he describes that guy as once in a career. I would think Bowser might be a once in a career guy. Yeah, he may have a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> you can have once in a career guys at different positions. It doesn't. I mean, we got two of the premier center fielders in the country both playing in this game. Different types of players, yeah. but two of the premier center fielders in the nation. And Esker, who goes by the nickname Esky, insists, you know, privately, as great as this team is, I think we're going to be better next year. It's still a young lineup. Yep. Eddie Park, the leadoff guy, freshman. Tommy Troy, freshman. Bowser, freshman. Mm. Brock, just a sophomore. Cody Huff sophomore. Crampton sophomore. I mean, you get six of the nine in his lineup that are underclassmen. You get back next year. And a young pitching staff outside of Brendan Beck. For this edition of the Brock Star, Brock Jones, that was his 16th RBI of the tournament, which snapped a tie with Notre Dame's Nico Cavetas for the most by any player. Swings wildly at that one, and it's a strikeout for Little, his third. That's the guy right there, Brock Jones, who for the fourth time this year has hit home runs in back to back games. He had five RBI and a homer in that game against Arizona. And they were off their game, and the opener found it with 20 hits against Arizona. And now it appears as if someone like Jones is very comfortable on this ball field. And then Vanderbilt bullpen at least moving around. Nick Maldonado, the right-hander, who has acted as one of the two closers for this Vanderbilt team, now up and throwing. 
Terrific numbers from Aldonado. 2 0. Oh. They either have seen the curveball really well, those balls go. break late. They look really good coming in, and they have taken several of them. I'll tell you what, I give them the green light right here. Robinson's got pop. Forcing him to throw the fastball because right now that changeup has not been thrown for a strike this inning. Eight homers on the year for Robinson. And this one has popped up, and the wind is likely going to push it into the seats, and it will. Justin Robinson went cross country to play college baseball from Melbourne, Florida. Ground slow roller and the foot race is won by Dominic Keegan. Eddie take us to break with the ball off the bat of Brock Jones. Well, it gets loud. 3 1 count. You throw this to Brock Jones, it does not matter where the wind is blowing. There's not a ballpark that can hold him. KP's right, it's going to make a lot of money. 2 0 Stanford going to the bottom of the third. Center field. Adam Doliak delivered. Got the key to the city. Can nobody do it like we can? So come on and ride with me. We got the key to the city. Love Adam Doliak on the Leave field. Leave it. Love him on the stage. Oh. Double into the gap for Doliak, and all he's done is make hits since. We got a beach ball out in right center. Maybe a balloon. Yep. Oh, the wind will blow those in. Good stride. Two nothing Stanford bottom three eight nine one. Vanderbilt Javier Vaz best defensive play that we've seen them make was in left field and it was a big one with two men on a diving catch near the line and left. Inserted into the lineup late. Don't be fooled by the numbers. No homers. Just an RBI. He's only played 18 games. Oh and a rolling ball. The first easy play for Nick Brucer. And there's one down. One and one and another one out of the strike zone. Gonzalez chased. Big kid here, Jason, the third baseman, 6'2, 220. But while the changeup hasn't yet been working for Vanderbilt, it has for Quinn Matthews. Oh, he's yeah. thrown a lot of them. But I he's much Two more comfortable throwing arm side. So to the right-handed hitters, the two-seam fastball it has good movement, the changeup that goes that way. And we'll see if Vanderbilt makes any kind of an adjustment the second time around. Well, the adjustment has to be at the plate. They all hit in the back of the box. You have to move up in the box to make sure you take a little bit of that movement away from that two-seam fastball and the changeup. Because so far they've been unable to hit the ball in the air. See where his foot is? Just move six inches up. He doesn't have the velo to throw it by you. Go out, hunt fastball, middle away, and challenge him to throw a fastball inside. Cut the plate in half. Think middle away the entire time. Dare him to come in. And if he does, I think these hitters are strong enough to get jammed and hit it over. Gonzalez on the ground of third. Bowser, another one. Seen him go to his left, and now he goes to his right. 
Thursday night ESPN Stephen A will start things off with Sports Center NBA countdown at eight game three Western Conference Finals Suns and the Clippers got back to the hotel last night flipped it on and DeAndre Ayton had a slam dunk with 07 to go on just an unbelievable inbounds pass from Jay Crowder's you were playing horse with your buddies it was one of those you have to shoot it over the backboard and have it go in. If Aiden wasn't there, I think it would have went in. There is no goaltending perfectly explained by Van Gundy and Jackson last night. A lot of folks are like, whoa, 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 that ball was in the cylinder when he grabbed it. No goaltending on an alley oop, out of bounds play. An unbelievable pass by Crowder. Great game. And a 2 0 oh. Suns. I will say this for all the complaining that goes on in our sport about replay, <laughs> they were reviewing. Everything. The last two minutes took 30 Maybe minutes. Again. Yeah. Out of bounds oh. plays. Yeah. Ben Gundy was very critical about it too. Yes, he was. Later on with SVP. SVP likes it. Just get it right. That's his point. That's kind of the whole point about instant replay. We're just trying to figure out ways to improve the process. But a great pass and a great game. Take another. All right, we're focused. Apparently, Scott Johnson a little hungry in the truck because we have uh, we have locked in on all the food that's being served here tonight. That's another Cut. take. Three and two. Full count. Three, two. And Bradfield pops this up down the line and going over there is Robinson and holds up for boy to see the wind knock that thing down. Kind of landed softly in the glove of Robinson. Two nothing. We're through three. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Drone is up tonight, flying in from left field, looking down at TD Ameritrade. College World Series been here since 2011. Stanford Vanderbilt two zip. And the first pitch breaking ball is called ball one from Christian Little. It starts the fourth inning. Maldonado continues to throw in the Vanderbilt bullpen. And that one is over the head of the shortstop Carter Young, leadoff man is aboard. That's Nick Bruiser, his first hit of the night. Right off the end of the bat, get that leadoff hitter on. Saw the same thing in the first inning on an error, getting the lead off on watch. You can just tell by the sound. And also, Carter Young just could not time it right. And now Drew Bowser, who doubled on that pop up to right field, and it's a good breaking ball. That's strike one. So Bowser's mom Yvette is a television producer in Hollywood and she wrote a baseball themed episode for the TV show Blackish. And the lead clip was Drew hitting a home run as a 12 year old. Mom is also a Stanford grad and very influential in his life and it was really because his mom had attended there that Drew according to Esker his coach had basically had this as part of his plan. He had a plan and one of them was I'm going to Stanford. I could be drafted but I'm going there and I'm going to win World Series. Well and Esky's comment today and I think it's very similar to what you see with Kamar Rocker and Jack Leiter and Christian Little is you don't see a lot of kids like this in college just that, that physically advanced a lot of times man they're going to sign out of high school because of where they get drafted but Bowser fits that mold. Just like Rocker, just like Lighter. Makes our game better, I know that. And correct me if I'm wrong, both Bowser and Little, both of them have been, both of them got to school in January. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, because Stanford didn't have fall baseball. I mean, it, they, they weren't on campus. And so for a lot of these freshmen, Bowser being one, the first time that they stepped onto a field in an organized situation for Stanford was in January. So you didn't have the opportunity to face college pitching in the fall. You didn't have the opportunity to honestly in many cases get to know your teammates. Yeah. 
And then everything goes fast forward when they get into it. That was one of the things David Esker was talking about today is I think to his point of I think we we may be better next year. It's nice to have fall baseball. I'll tell you that. I mean there's a lot of development that takes place there. Here's the three two runner is going that's ball four. I had that ball four. It's only all right two and two. I was reading the graphic up there it said three and two. So a stolen base there for Brucer. You're going to see a lot of that. As long as Little's on the mound, he's a 1-5, one, 1-5-5 five, one, five, five to the plate. That is a go. Very slow. Something he needs to continue to work on now that he's going to be a main part of this rotation moving forward. And here it comes. That's ball inside four. ball four. Now you do ask the question, how long do you leave Little in the game when you have a very effective pitcher who's pitched to the stage out there at Maldonado? Oh. And that last half inning Christian Little was in the dugout he was still visibly frustrated talking talking to CJ Rodriguez his catcher point where Scott Brown wouldn't even come over he just kind of smiled and sat on the side but he's obviously still frustrated. Gotta go get him. Tony Tim Corbin comes to the mound this may be the decision here a little. 69 pitches he's not helped by his defense early and the players have come out of the dugout to greet him when he comes off and it'll be Nick Maldonado who's going to come into the game and just try to slow everything down for Vanderbilt. Well, we saw Mississippi State's bullpen do the job yesterday and hold and give his offense a chance. Vanderbilt's hoping the same thing from their bullpen now keep Stanford at two and give their offense a chance. Well the day is done for Christian Little and, and you can see the approach for Stanford they recognize breaking ball pretty consistently today. Spit on some really good ones and got themselves into plus counts and this was a plus count 3 1 fastball center cut really over the outside half but Brock Jones does what he's now done 18 times drives it out of the ballpark Stanford with a 2 nothing lead and Vandy will go to the bullpen and a good arm here Nick Maldonado 242. ERA 26 appearances and how about the strikeout to walk numbers 52 strikeouts six walks Maldonado is not a guy that started if you think like well how come Maldonado doesn't start game three this is his role and again you win tonight you got to play again Friday you win Friday you're playing again real soon. So the challenge of coming out of a bracket in which you've lost a game is playing out right in front of these teams and the decisions they have to make and how they use their arms. Comes in with two men on. He'll get Tommy Troy, the eighth hitter. And again, in spite of the obvious spun situation with two on, nobody out, they tend not to do it. And Troy isn't doing it. Yeah, they played for the big inning. The one run here, one run there. That's not the philosophy of the Cardinal. Hunt. Maldonado quickly ahead, 0 and 2. Put in your back pocket, Kyle. What do you learn from this experience if you're little? Because there's going to be more of them. Hey, yeah, he's he's going to be in the spotlight for a long time if he stays healthy. I don't know. I mean, just I, I think first of all, you're facing a really advanced offense. I mean, this is as good offense as Vanderbilt has has faced this year. Um, and and some of that is some guys didn't swing at pitches that you usually think they're going to swing. Yep. Um, and, and that's what you start every level you go up. I mean, Eddie, you remember that in pro ball. I mean, you go from A ball to double A, and well, these guys don't swing it what they used to. You go to the big leagues, these guys don't swing it at stuff that they swung at. It's the same thing when you get on this stage. And it's interesting. That being said, they did sw they did have 12 swings and misses. So it's really interesting. There was, I think, there was a frustration yeah. with the fact that the curveball he wasn't getting 
them to go after and give a lot of credit to the coaching staff preparing the players of saying if you see curveball usually it isn't a strike. Cut across the plate according to the home plate umpire Travis Katzenmeyer and a strikeout to start for Nick Maldonado. That's a big one right there Maldonado you're going to see primarily two seam fastball and then this one cutter slider call it whatever you want that one's got a little bit more depth but CJ Rodriguez can do that. He can steal some strikes for you. Look like he did it right there. See how much closer he is to the plate than any other catcher oh, yeah. so far in the College World Series or even at the next level. They they're so deep. CJ goes out there and reaches almost out over the plate. He gets really low too when he needs to. Adam Crampton this one could be two instead it's none. Looked like Carter Young had peaked at second base to see how quickly Drew Bowser was there. That is going to be error number three on Vanderbilt. Watch Carter Young right here. Watch, watch his head. Watch his eyes. Puts the knee down. Assuming he's trying to do the transfer. What you have to do is funnel that ball to your chest. He's trying to do it away from his chest. You have to bring that ball all the way in towards the belly. Funnel it in and then be able to throw it to second base. Surprise he goes to a knee on that? Not really. Not on that one. Not on that one. You know, a lot of you could say you could get a little lazy right there, but that short hop is actually a very easy play for Young to make. Oh. So Maldonado now has the bases loaded with Bruiser at third. Bowser, good speed at second. Adam Crampton at first base. And Stanford isn't winning this game right now. Vanderbilt is losing it. Three errors and a misplayed ball in right. Now behind 2 and 0. Oh. Remember seeing Stanford play a game like this? I mean, uh, Vanderbilt? No. We're in the third inning. No. The count goes three and zero. Oh. Are you taking at least one here? You may be taking two. And again, 52 strikeouts and only six walks. And that's high ball four. He walks in a run. The the uncharacteristic things that you're seeing from Vanderbilt is now covering everything. Yep. I mean defensive miscues, mental mistakes, and Maldonado doesn't walk anybody. And he just walked one on four pitches with the bases low. I mean, there's your first inning, two errors under and run in the first. Bradfield gets picked off first, which was a really good move. I mean, I, I think that. You throw it in there as a miscue. Now he misses with a first pitch breaking ball. But we haven't seen that all year. Bradfield getting no. picked off, picked off at all. Still a lot of ball game, but they have to be able to limit it right here. Five balls in a row so far for Maldonado. Been a real tough night for pitching coach there, Scott Brown. In his ninth year with Vanderbilt, he and Little had a hard time getting on the same page, and now you bring in reliable Nick Maldonado. Gets hurt by an error and then a walk, which is rare. Yeah, I, th I think you're going to see simplify right here because when Maldonado's going right, it's two seam fastball that'll get him a lot of ground balls. I think this is Scott Brown saying, listen, we're going to start a two seamer right down the middle, see if he'll hold a ground ball at somebody and let's get off the field. Um, which makes great sense, but the ground balls Adam hasn't really produced outs. No, but I, I mean, history the whole year will tell you that. Sure. Overall. If you're Tawa right now, I think you're absolutely sitting fastball. They've turned 37 double plays, and the very dangerous Brock Jones is there on deck. He's already got a homer tonight. He's got 18 on the season. Wow. How about that? 1 0 slider right there. Tawa, the veteran, one of them a senior. And the two hole and a big opportunity for Stanford to blow this thing open. Instead, a pop up. 
in foul territory. Gonzalez makes the play, and that's a huge out. Now you got the showdown. Maldonado and Brock Jones. Well, 3 1 pitch. Last time up the bat for Brock. Gets his arms extended. You see where that pitch was right there? Middle away. He was leaning all over it. Let's see if Maldonado starts Brock soft and then attacks late with the fastball. Jones' development as a baseball player has astonished those with Stanford. Athletically, he's as gifted as anybody in the country. But again, a two sport star, was a safety for the football team, played special teams, and now fully devoted to baseball. And his acumen, his willingness to learn and listen and absorb, he's a sponge. He's got him on every radar out there. He's got two grand slams this season, and again, against Texas Tech and the Supers, hit three homers in a game. Gets the call. That's a tough one. One and two for Jones. See the reaction of Brock right there. I love it. He just shook his head. Just shook his head, said, okay, that one's yours. No problem. Big spot here in the fourth inning. Bases loaded, already up 3 0. Ahead one and two is Nick Maldonado to the three hitter. And he gets a slow roller. Maldonado's got to be quick. He fires. Did he tag him? Oh, we'll see. They may want to take a look at that. It looked like Keegan's glove came down on Jones. He's currently safe. It's 4 0. Well, Keegan's not saying a word. I mean, usually if, if he yep. thinks he got him, Keegan immediately would have. Done what now it seems like kids when they're 10 years old know how to do go make the headphones gesture because they want to go to the booth but he's by him that time Jones enough from the left side ducks just a little bit but the speed of Jones enough to beat out a throw that was just a little bit high Stanford adds one base is still juiced the inability right now of Stanford uh, of Vanderbilt to be able to make the plays even with the speed of Brock Jones going down the line. Cody Huff ground ball the third that will do it but a couple more runs another inning wow it is four nothing Stanford leading Vanderbilt in this elimination game 35 of the last 39 college World Series champions were two and zero, oh. and that's the case for NC State their offense has been terrific Mr. Highfield with an outstanding pitching performance they got a big home run from Tatum off of lighter broke up the no hitter and how about Mississippi State's comeback last night Tanner Allen they were getting no hit and Allen gave them the lead which they held on to the hotel lobby was a madhouse last <laughs> night with Mississippi State <laughs> yes, it was and Chris Lamonis made it clear earlier today he's heard that the entire state is now in cars and driving to Omaha they are all in on what yeah. Hale State's doing this one is uh, last one out of Starkville just turn the lights <laughs> off because we'll <laughs> they're all coming this way and come on up. So Carter Young after there was a lashing from the head man Tim Corbin to the whole group before they came to the plate. Great change up one ball one strike. Quinn Matthews feeling pretty good and he's got a four nothing lead. Tell you what, Carter, Carter Young has not been able to make an adjustment at all with that changeup. Struck out in the first inning on it, threw like three of them in that at bat. Oh. He'll show him the fastball, and then when he gets two one, two and one, or in a hitter's count, it's two one, he'll pull the string again oh, with yeah. the changeup. He's going to cross count you the whole night. I mean, when you think you're in fastball counts, you're going to see changeups. When you think you're in off speed counts, that's what he's going to surprise with a fastball. Oh. Two one fastball just misses up, but it's it's the confidence with that changeup. To throw it whenever he wants to. Vanderbilt has had now their second three error game of this World Series. They had two of those all year before Omaha, and that's a fastball at 91 right by him. Full count, three, two. That's an agitated, frustrated head man right there. Will not chase the leadoff walk. 
Chris. Carl, here's that conversation you're referring to in the dugout. Tim Corbin pulled everyone around, knew it was about as heated as I've ever seen Corbin, focusing on the mistakes, telling the guys, if you continue to make these, we will be on a bus ride home. Yeah, he's got that in him. You just don't usually see it because they generally are so fundamentally sound, but that has not been the case really through this World Series. Lighter was the difference the other night, and finally, Gave up the homer. Three errors tonight, a misplayed ball in right, pickoff at first. But still, we're only in the bottom of the fourth. And a very capable offense. Quinn Matthews keeps throwing that change up, and the right-handed hitters can't figure it out. Yeah, that's that's going to be the story of this one. If if Vanderbilt can lay off the changeup and force the fastball into the zone, I think that's when you see this offense start heating up. But if they're swinging at that one. He's got him going after the changeup is down and out of the zone. That's that's when you're playing right into Matthews' hand. I'll tell you this. If I'm part of that meeting right there, and I'm listening to Coach Corbin tell me I'm I'm on a bus ride back home. That's 11 hours. I better start swinging the bat. I came in on a plane and I'm leaving on a bus. <laughs> no. Start making contact here. He's taking the plane. They're taking the bus. Ball one and one. Keegan gets one to hit. This ball's driven to left. Forget about it. Now maybe the speech worked. That is a massive home run from Keegan. It's his 15th of the year, and just like that, Vanderbilt cuts the lead to two. It's 4-2. Tell you what, KP, that ball cut in on him. Usually we've seen the changeup go away. That one just seems like he pulled it across right into the barrel. Look, changeup grip, but the ball's not running away. It's coming in, staying right there, and Keegan showing butt on the pitch before 0-1. Get to change up right there. To your point, all right. So, so if your picking, if your picking gets stuck on a baseball when you're throwing a change up, that's the one where it'll straighten out or it'll cut. And it just, it didn't look like he got all the way through and got pronated. That's the difference in that pitch. If it has sink, he's got a chance. If not, it stays right there. And with one swing, Dominic Keegan obviously has changed the score. He's changed that dugout. I mean, that right there. Well, and. Maybe Tim Corbin did too with the discussion a few minutes ago. And that bus is starting to grow some wings. <laughs> you saw Troy Leneve go up there. He squared to bunt as well. I mean, pitch from Matthews was very high and very tight, so he ducked out of the way. And not a surprise, but Stanford starts to get some activity in their bullpen. Jacob Parrish was outstanding in relief against Arizona. It's a good chance to see the closer at some point early in this one. That's Zach Gresh. And again, since May 1st, Quinn Matthews has not gone more than four innings in a game. May 1st against USC, he went six and a third. But after that second time around the lineup, they pick him up pretty good. You know, it, it, it feels like for Stanford, it's going to be one of those nights to where it, it's probably going to be one time around the lineup, guys. And Matthews is, is that guy. I mean, when you've seen him for the second time, it, it, it feels like it's going to be a little bit more comfortable at bat. Gretch up and going, that sidewind and right hander. But it, it's you're going to have to piecemeal a bullpen together if you're Stanford tonight. But that's that's the way they're built. Nobody out. Two run shot for Keegan. So it's 4 2, and here's the next one to Troy Leneve. Got away with that one. He was close to getting punched. He was asking for time right there, and it was not granted at all by Travis Katzenmeyer behind the plate. We've seen that a lot here in the College World Series where home plate umpires will not grant you time. It's a good foul ball right there, man. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number four for Quinn Matthews. Four punch outs tonight for Quinn Matthews. So these, these are the good change ups, all right? Watch the late sink. 
really gets it turned over and it just falls away from the right handed hitter but this one didn't have a lot of sink and when it doesn't sink that changeup becomes a BP fastball coming back in towards the barrel Keegan's 15th home run of the year changed it and as a hitter I love the look right there after contact of Matthews as a hitter. Oh, I didn't, yeah, you clarified right away. Yes. Yeah, just have to make sure. In Spanish, we put the uh, exclamation not only in the back, but also <laughs> in the front. <laughs> just upside down. Oh. To an O to Isaiah Thomas, he's your right fielder. Popped out to the second baseman his first time up. Keegan's home run was the 399th of this year's tournament and the 18th that has been hit here. This one on the ground and Crampton will throw across second out the 18th of this year's College World Series. The most we've had at TD Ameritrade they have 18 in games at Rosenblatt but the most we've had in a whole World Series since moving here in 11 was 23. That was in 2017. So we got 18 now. I think we're probably going to have a new record. Not tonight necessarily, but by the end of this series. Parker Nolan. Jammed on it. That's a okay. quick pick. How about Bowser? Then a star over there at third base. We'll talk with the Vanderbilt head coach. Ask him how that meeting went with his team. Tim Corbin after this. Still anybody's game after that two run home run. It's 4 2. We go to the top of the fifth. Tim Corbin kind enough to join us. We had video of your speech there to the team. To Ooh. the extent you can tell us what you said, what'd you say? Uh, nothing you say here <laughs> the language I learned from my mother in first grade I guess how frustrated has it been well I mean it is it's just a little bit tentative and, and not aggressive uh, and, and not playing uh, to win I mean that's that's the bottom line corpse how much can one swing that swing by Keegan just just change mental approach on your side no doubt I mean if, if you start loosening up then we can play a little bit but we're, we're not in that mode yet uh, but you know still a lot of game left. All right, Tim, thanks very Thank much. Yep. Appreciate it. New England native, been at Vanderbilt 19 years. Now we'll start the fifth, 4 2. That ball is to Bradfield. If anybody was going to get it, it would have been him, but that's a leadoff single. Once again, leadoff man aboard for the Cardinal. He's hit by Christian Robinson jumped on that first pitch. You gotta be careful with this guy. He is eight for eight stolen bases. Nick Bruiser and then Drew Bowser. For the Cardinal, the goal keep putting pressure on Vanderbilt. That's one thing that Stanford has been is aggressive on the bases. So far, two stolen bases. So Vanderbilt everybody knew coming into this tournament they had the two horses at the top Kamal Rocker and Jack Leiter. They won the Rocker game although he certainly yes, was he knocked did. around and then they lost the Leiter game. And Leiter was fantastic. Punched out 15. One swing the difference. Terrell Tatum was the hero that night for NC State. They've been on a magical run for Elliott Avent. This one to center. Bradfield now got to come in a few steps. And there's one down. But you need three. I mean, generally you need at least three quality starters if you're going to win a college World Series. And you can take a look at the starting pitching this season. I don't know Kyle they're going to they're going to do that on most staffs right their numbers are just going to look better than the all yeah. others right. Yeah it doesn't it doesn't much matter who it is but I mean it, it has been there are years that the strength of Vanderbilt is depth of pitching staff and there's plenty of talent out there 
Um, but it's it's not there's not as many guys that they trust I think in this stage than, than maybe they have in the past. That's why Leiter and Rocker have been so important getting them to this point. The one out there now though that is one they really trust. Let me ask you this we saw Rocker there with the chart. Mm -hmm. They win tonight. Does he pitch the next game. Absolutely. Absolutely. Throw down. Good arm there by CJ Rodriguez. Who was an infielder for most of his life and then one of the coaches suggested you know you got great hands. You got great feet. First time he put on that catcher's gear was behind the plate. He knew they knew he wasn't coming coming out. No, he, he can really catch and throw. One and two. So to your point about Vanderbilt rocker lighter but think about the position players and the pitchers that have gone through that program really in the last you know, five ten years Austin Martin Kyle Wright Jaron Kendall Brian Reynolds J.J. Blade Mike Yastrzemski yeah Sonny Gray Minor Price Bueller Dansby Swan like the list of of great players goes on and on. And lighter and rocker are there and then you wonder you know Bradfield so young who, who is that. Who's that position player or two of them. Bradfield for sure. Um, Carter Young's got a chance to be special to the shortstop. And the Good. bat really works. I like him a lot and, and again one thing that Young has not done is swing the bat a lot from the right side yep. because of the injury he had to that left shoulder. Diving into second base on a on a play against FIU late 23, in the season. Bowser gone on strikes and a big strike out there for Maldonado. He picks up his second. It's been the one he's been most comfortable throwing today. He calls it a cutter. I mean, it's got a little cutter movement, slider movement. It's got a little bit of depth to it. You can call it whatever you want. A lot of times, mentally, it feels better to call it something, even though the analytics of the pitch might not exactly look that way. But it's got enough to get it off a right-handed barrel. Two outs. You thinking about Robinson moving here, ready? I wouldn't. Tommy Troy saw a really good at bat the first time with the walk. I'm trying to turn that lineup around again. We're in the Super Regionals. Esker made it clear we are an aggressive team. We are going to push the envelope. We are not, I'm not sure you pigeonhole all West Coast teams, but they certainly got a reputation as we're going to butt, we're going to move guys around. We're not going to necessarily hit it over the fence. He wants to hit it over the oh. fence. He wants to push the envelope. He, he was an aggressive player when he was the shortstop back in 87, winning a title. He wants everybody to be. It feels like I want everybody to be Brock Jones. That's what I want. Well, the other thing that, that he's done with with this offense is he's freed him up. I mean, him and Tommy Nicholson, they've they've freed him up. Just said that's fine. I mean, you may swing and miss every once in a while, but we're we're going to take advantage of of what we are and what they are is power up and down this lineup. You're looking for a team that's loose seeing that smile on Robinson's face indicates they are very loose and have been most of the night one one he's not going Hunt. one and two great point Eddie made about the ability of Mississippi State to have their bullpen throw zeros on the board and eventually come back and win the game last night after giving up four runs in the first two innings they didn't give up another one until very late when it was six four it ended six five and that's Vanderbilt's formula now he is going that strike three and the third strikeout for Maldonado we'll talk with the head man from Stanford David Esker in his fourth year and trying to win another one here after this. Bottom of the fifth. Hey, go find out what's Stanford going on. leading Vanderbilt by a score of four to two, and he's kind enough to join us now in the middle of the game. All right, so Esky, tell us what your impression of the first few innings here have been. Well, hey, we, we we've left some guys on the on the bases. I hope we don't regret later. But uh, hey, it's good to good to get out in front and give a little cushion for Quinn. He's just got to continue to throw strikes. You know, the home run doesn't really bother you, but it's the walk in front of the home run that's a little painful. 
Brock Jones, how special is he? Yeah, he's, he's a special player and he's getting better. He's, he's just scratching the surface, but he's, he's really special. How much of the players appreciate you kind of giving them free reign all this West Coast we play small ball that's not that's not who you are how much do they appreciate it. Yeah I hope so you know I, I just I just like to see him swing and play free and and you know hey we, we can't work for one because uh, we expect Vanderbilt to be able to score some runs too so we're going to have to put up some crooked numbers for sure. Game on all right thanks very much okay. we appreciate it. All right guys. Thanks, thanks, Esker. There is the home run hitter Brock Jones. He's out in center field. It's a 4 2 game, bottom five. Vanderbilt will have 7 8 9 up. And Zach Resch, the closer for Stanford, who can give you multiple innings, continues to stay on that mound out there in the bullpen. It'll be CJ Rodriguez, Javier Vaz, and Jason Gonzalez. Swings at the first one to right center field. Jones, look out, look out. Boy, they didn't call each other off or didn't hear each other. And Jones and Robinson both went after it. Robinson caught it. But that's a free safety on a Stanford Cardinal football team you nearly banged heads with. Yeah, this is a scary play right here. Brock Jones has this baseball, but see Robinson coming in just going at it. This came really close to a not so good situation for Stanford and their help. One down Javier Vaz. It's a big out in the fifth inning to get that leadoff guy and Vaz strike number one. There's an ideal situation for Esker with regards to his starting pitcher Matthews and his length. How many innings is it. Is it the fifth and we're good. I don't know that I would want him to face this lineup one more time. I, I think if if you had gone to Stanford staff and said and and obviously he's not there yet. But if you went to Stanford staff and said Matthew's going to get you through the lineup twice and you're going to have the lead they'd say ah, good. That's fine. We'll we'll take it from there and go to the bullpen because it's he's didn't pitch deep into games very often. But I think it's interesting because you look at the lineup and the way it's configured for Vanderbilt. You have Enrique Bradfield Jr. at the top, a left handed hitter. Get over, get over. Get in On the ground, fielded by Bruiser, and there are two quick outs. And then you have Carter Young that you want him to swing from the right side because he just hasn't had a lot of reps from the right side and he hasn't been healthy with that left shoulder. I'd rather see him face Matthews a third time from the right side than all of a sudden come in the bullpen and turn him around. He's a better hitter right now from the left side. Decisions to be made right there by Coach S. Wayne continues to blow straight in from center for Jason Gonzalez. Saw production from Gonzalez last uh, in, in game one, and you expect something and some pop from the nine hole hitter. And this is where Vandy sometimes can catch you, catch you napping. Mm, 2 0, and took a big rip at it, 91 up. Saw the home run he hit earlier this week to right field. Part of a three hit game, he was the Guy at the plate that delivered the game winning single through the middle in the 12th. Ball. So they were pushed to the 12th inning in the Rocker game and won, and then they lost in the lighter start. We've seen years where Vanderbilt has come in here and run through this field. 3 1. I would love to see him take that pitch because it's down and away 3 1 and keyhole more on middle in maybe he makes a mistake there. Yeah he's trying to go away but so be it that would have been a ground ball to the shortstop. Got him Quinn Matthews battles back and that's a big one two three inning. 
as he walks off pumping his fist 4 2 Stanford to the sixth we go in Omaha. We got a game coming up it is Will Smith of course the Dodgers and Padres he was here in 2014 that's him as a Louisville Cardinal catcher Dodgers Padres 10 Eastern time on ESPN two teams separated by a game and a half. Who's on that game. Cardinal. Cardinal. Fleming and Jesse Mendoza. Flem. Wow. World is being taken over by Stanford Cardinal. Believe it. <laughs> so Dave Fleming was our when I was there was the voice of Stanford baseball on KZSU. No kidding. Yeah. He called all of your games. Uh, I mean called them not all of them. You mean there were multiple guys calling games. Somebody, yeah go. Chris Atterbury who's who's with the twins now uh, and Dave Fleming. What's it like for you to be up here like Whoa. is it difficult to be objective. I don't, I don't mean that in any snarky way but you played for Stanford you're close to the program. <laughs> no, I, I mean no not really it's kind of cool though isn't it it's phenomenal I mean so here's you get to know these coaches and they get to be friends. I yeah. mean Corbs and Brownie and, and we just got to know we've had them a lot. Right. Bradfield's not going to be able to run that down. It's a single. Um, and I mean David Esker was our assistant when I was there for two years. I've known Esky for 25 years. Um, it's just fun. Yeah. I mean it's it's first of all it's fun to see him again and just and you know. We don't have a chance to do this for a while, but especially in this environment too. I, I I hope, and I don't think he's in town, but I hope that Coach Marquis is watching because you know it had been since 2008. They haven't seen this ballpark yet. It's the first time that Stanford's been here. But um, Esky was a starting shortstop when Coach Marquis won his first to two. Ooh, that's foul. That hurt. <laughs> Get good home plate umpire sound so great. far in this one. It's been great, but the Marquis point too, and Esky made it quite clear, and he did even during the sound we heard earlier about the brotherhood that he feels with the players he played with. But he speaks to Marquis all the time yeah. about every subject and says his fingerprints are all over this program. I mean, reverentially, whether it's a real estate transaction, relationship, baseball, he. Falls on Marquis for everything. Now, I don't know if nine would have gone with the black unis. I don't know if that one would have worked. <laughs> but there's still pullovers, <laughs> and that part's <laughs> not going to change. Does not like the button downs. They didn't we didn't have them. No, we never had them. Usually, right, the starting pitcher. I mean, we've seen that with some. Pro They're the ones I wanted to wear red. I wanted yeah. to wear black. I wanted to wear white. 0 oh, and 2 to Eddie Park in the dirt and runner goes. That one got by Rodriguez. Now that's something you bear, you don't see a lot. Yeah. Again, we've seen the defense make mistakes and everything, but watch this right here. Drops to the knee and then comes up with the mitt. You have to stay down. Got to have to keep that mitt down. Try to block it. Never close the mitt at all. Instead, it popped up. Third consecutive inning and fourth of the game that Stanford has had the leadoff guy on, putting pressure on that Vanderbilt defense. And he fouls that one off. I, I don't, four's not going to be enough. But if, it feels like his Vanderbilt offense is going to get going. Wind's starting to die down, ball's going to fly. I mean, there's already two home runs, so it hadn't affected it too much. But it feels like a night to where you're going to need more than four. Stanford's left seven on base, too, in the first five innings. Vanny's left one. Crampton out there at second base little out of the game Maldonado pitched 38. Oh. It's a great take. That is certainly something you remember from this game if they do go on and win their ability not to swing at pitches that move out of the zone. Eddie Park the freshman's been on twice scored in the first inning. Reached on a walk in the fourth. He's got a guy at second on a 2 2.
very different game for Stanford. They led 10 zip against Arizona. They ended up with 14 runs, 20 hits. And this one is a slow roller. Maldonado gets over there to third base. Yes, he got it. Yes, he did. Goes Crampton. You heard the first base umpire Hendricks because there was some question. Did he get on the bag? And yes, he did. But to third base with one out goes Crampton. Watch that right foot. Misses it and then he just straddles it right there. Just gets it with the. <laughs> the pitcher's with toes. Toe. Yeah. With the pitcher's, pitcher's toe. toe got it right there. Yeah. Now infield has to play in right here. Runner will be going on contact. Strike one to the veteran Tim Tawa. Love to have a guy that's seen baseball for so long in this two spot. One on one. You get a hunt cutter here, don't you? He seems in the bigger spot. That's what Maldonado start trying to go to. He wants you to try to pull this baseball. Mm -hmm. Stay with it. Hit it to right center like big RBI guys do. Well, not going, and Gonzalez looks him back, throws to first, and he would have been dead to rights if he took off. That's what he wanted you to do. Try to pull the baseball, hit it on the ground. Now you have a decision to make. You got Brock Jones coming up. Bring in the lefty that's warming up in the bullpen. Do you just put four fingers up and walk him? Or do you just pitch around him? Runner at third, can't give up anything in the dirt. I think if, if there's certain guys out there for Vanderbilt, you may put four up. Um, I, I think you really trust Maldonado's ability. Ooh, five hole. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long exhale right there from Travis Katzen by the home plate umpire. No contact, thankfully. I just think you have to be careful here. Yesterday, Tanner Allen came up, and what did he say after the game? I was looking slider. Yep. Base is open. Right now, we've seen two of those. You can call it a slider, a cutter, whatever it may be. But they've been soft, and he's now 0-2. Runner at third with one, one out is now a runner at third with two outs and what may be a huge inning in this game with Brock Jones up. Hampton down there at third. Here's the one two and that's pulled very foul very quickly. Pac-12 first teamer. Look out! <laughs> overthrew that one and nearly had another run come in. That's one of my major concerns right now because you try to be perfect with Brock Jones that you can overthrow it or spike it. After that fastball, you know he's coming with the slider. Let's see if Brock Jones is sitting on it. Shook the first one. 2-2 two -two right field corner going over Thomas. He won't get it. Brock Jones hurts him again. He'll go to second and pull up with a double. Another RBI. And Brock Jones. Tonight, it's 5 2 Stanford. Give him a chance to get those arms extended, man. And, and he can pull the length of the plate. That's the one thing that Jones can really do just out of the reach of Isaiah Thomas out in right field. Love that shot, too. I just I just do not understand that's that's the circle guy for me in this lineup. There's okay. no way you're going to beat me. You're down two. I want Huff to beat me instead slider again right there after a flat fastball way outside. Brock Jones is sitting on it. We've seen the elite hitters do it. Tanner Allen did it last night. this right here you see it slider you see the dot stays on it extension again not the same pitch but pretty much location away this one just a little bit lower barreling it once again Cody Huff sky high 
Gonzalez makes the play. Brock Jones, though, does it again. He's been so good the entire season, in particular the postseason. Welcome back to the NCAA College World Series presented by Capital One. Brock Jones show three hits, three RBIs each of the last two games. The only Stanford player with multiple three hit, three RBI games in a College World Series. And a reminder more coverage of the College World Series, interactive brackets, articles. Go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Just after nine in the East, 8.04 here in Omaha. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, Carl Ravage. Beach balls are flying out of the field here as you take a look at the eight teams that came to Omaha. And Jones doing everything, including helping out the grounds crew with the beach balls. The crowd does not like to see those bad boys deflated, but the wind is not helping them. They could bounce it around, but it's going to end up on that field. And when it's there, they don't generally don't give them back. No. Center fielder may give them back. Yeah, he might. And endear himself. Well, Bradfield now will try to start things off for Vanderbilt. And Matthews, for the third time, faces him. And that's down. And Bradfield, who led the game off the same way, is now at first base. Remember, he was picked off the first time. We'll see if he's able to steal a base. This time and this is a nice swing pitch middle away just you have to know who you are as a hitter your job is to get on base hit some lenience forget about hitting the ball in the air forget about launch angle get on first create havoc and that single or that walk can turn into a double or a triple with your legs. Carter Young a strikeout a walk he scored a run on that home run by Keegan who's on deck. He has to be aware again of the one that got him and that was the quick step pickoff. Again you're playing at home keep an eye on the left foot. The toe does it come up or not. Bradfield's lead is a full step less than it was when he got picked off. When he got picked off, that right foot was just about to the cut of the grass. And now when he goes out there, he's he's well short of it. At a spot that he's comfortably can get back with the quick one, but still far enough that he can steal it back. Saw it come up right there. I like when people have fun at home. I had never heard that. The reason again. we focus so much on them, guys, 46 stolen bases this year. Leader in all of college baseball. Caught only six times. He dives hey. back that time on that quick move from Matthews. And it's a lot easier because you're not, you're not focused on that right leg at all. When he has, when he does that quick step off move, you're already focused yeah, on you're that. You're staring at that foot. You're staring at him. It's all you have to look at. I mean, Lou Brock, rest in peace, he told me, he said, hey, it's a lot easier to steal off lefties and righties. Back. Matthews in the first inning was able to pick off Bradfield. He followed that up with a strikeout of Young and a strikeout of Keegan. One and one. Winner of this one advances to the Friday game against NC State. And it's Texas and Virginia tomorrow night. ESPN 2 at 7 Eastern. And they will get Mississippi State Friday night, the winner. I'll tell you this. This would be, for me, the last hitter he faces. I was surprised he came back out in this inning. I just, it, it, it maybe get a little greedy right now. He's got you through the lineup twice. And it feels like a guy to where if you've seen him a few times, I mean, especially for right handed hitters, it is it is all fastball changeup. We'll see. I mean, he's a hard ground ball away from rolling a double play, too. All right, I 
I'll tell you one thing you didn't see or maybe you did there. So Bowser at third base on every ball that Bruiser has thrown to him. He immediately then gets into a backup position for the throw back and that was an example right there where the ball got away from Matthews but each time that Matthews throws over to the first baseman Bowser the third baseman makes sure he's ready in case the ball gets by. And he's doing you a favor as a hitter here you know that you are going to get a change up one time during this at bat and that's for Carter Young. You have a big hole between first and second. You're down three. It's an easy knock. Just fillet it over there. Don't try to do too much and let the big boys then behind you do the damage. So Bradfield, who's at first, in his first nine games, he had almost 500. He was sitting 447. They went into a four for 29 slump. His youth coach, who played ball in Plantation, Florida, was Bruce Avon, who was a major leaguer and played with Kenny Lofton. Avon actually discovered Bradfield when he was 11, and back then said, "That's Kenny Lofton again." Lofton was an unbelievable outfielder and great base dealer as this one is fouled back. What's impressed me the most is, is the stolen bases at this age. And the other thing is 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 Tim Corbin's willingness to just turn him loose and trust a freshman because it's it's not I mean Eddie you know this it's not it's not speed that steals your bases it helps. But it's understanding the art of of base stealing and when to go and jumps and everything else that Bradfield has such an advanced understanding of. I know you met his mom that is dad was in the Astros organization for a handful of years. Went back to Panama where she's from and visited the country. He speaks so much about the impact that his folks have had on him. And this kid's going to make an impact on the Panamanian national team too because he qualifies. 2 2. This one is playable. Bradfield heads back to first as Tawa gets under it. And he kind of lulled Carter Young to sleep. And an innocent pop up. There's a decision to be made here now. Dominic Keegan coming up. We know what happened last time. Matthews has not been going deep at all into ball games. Steve Rodriguez to his right. To our right, excuse me. Tommy Nicholson right there. So Bradfield's streak of four straight games without a steal entering today is tied for his longest streak this season. Again, that's how active he's been on the bases. I don't know if you've heard this one, but this is where I forget about the runner. <laughs> Keep the ball Keep down. Keep the ball down. Keep the ball down. A wonderful song. Let your defense play right here. Not a Doliac song, but it certainly rose from the charts in the KBO world. Eddie was singing during uh, one of the early morning telecasts. <laughs> forget about the runner and keep the ball down. But not too far down. What's the purpose? Why are you doing that? Well, right now, 5 2. I need him to focus on Dominic Keegan. What he did last time, hit the ball over 400 feet for the home run, the two runs that they've had. I don't need him to be paying attention too much. To, to Enrique, because his mom told me it's Enrique, not Enrique Bradfield Jr. Make your pitch right here. A lot of ground balls Matthews has been able to get. He needs one right now and let the defense work. Brampton Tower, they've turned 35 double plays. Stanford, the next pitch. Oh! Now 2 0. Oh. And both misses so far have been up. Will he throw a 2 0 -oh change up here? Because he's done it so far in this game when he has gone to 2 0. -oh. Remember, it was a changeup that got hit out. A changeup that cut back into the barrel of Keegan. 
That's all the offense for Vandy so far today. Oh. Three and oh and you run the risk now of bringing the tying run of the plate. Lefty now been sent out to the mound of the bullpen. Leneve, the designated hitter, lefty on deck. She was just unbelievable against Arizona. Is up. And it may just be a situational deal for Palish. 3 1, good pitch, and that's right up the middle. Bradfield will go. Throw to third, gets cut off. There's the speed of Enrique Bradfield Jr. And Keegan single keeps Vanderbilt in business and they signal the end for Quinn Matthews. Watch Enrique Bradfield Jr. right here rounding second base. He stalls a little bit. Just enough to all of a sudden take the pace away from Brock Jones and the momentum of going to third base. It's right there, just a little shimmy. Stop, and now we're going. He's his own coach. There's a move to be made here. Thomas Eager, the pick, pitching coach, on his way out right now. I would think that that is it. Polish was up and running a left-hander. But you got to be happy with the outing that you got from Quinn Matthews. A left-hander worked your way, worked his way into the sixth inning, and leaves with, leaves with the lead. It's one of the deepest starts that Matthews has had all year. Polish is coming in. He gave you three and two thirds the other night against Arizona, and he's coming into a situation. First and third. Well, the day is over for Quinn Matthews, but the left-hander was really solid for Stanford. Off-speed stuff stole a lot of outs. Slider to Javier Baz right there. But the changeup is the difference. When Matthews has the changeup going, the fastball plays up, and his fastball played up. I mean, he snuck 90-91 by some guys the entire day. So he works into the sixth inning. Officially goes five and a third. Punched out five. Responsible for the two runners on, but he leaves with the lead. So the college baseball world brings Jacob Polish, the senior out of Richardson, Texas, back to the mound to face the lefty, Troy Leneve. But he's not going to face the lefty, Troy Leneve. It looks like Vanderbilt is going to throw a pinch hitter up there. And that is Tate Colwick, who's been banged up but starting to come back and get healthy. And the game is on now with Esker and Corbin. All right, if you're managing at home, this is actually a good move here for, for Esky. And the reason I say this is now you already take out Leneve out of the game. When the lineup comes around again, if it's in the eighth inning or the ninth inning, you don't have that lefty bat in the middle of the lineup, but it sets it up for your righty pitchers in the bullpen. So being down 5-2, Coach Corbin taking his chances right now in the bottom of the sixth inning. Good numbers for the junior Colwick. 284, 6, and 24. A slug of 5'11. And a first and third situation for Jacob Polish. There's some thump in this bat now. Colwick was the starter for a lot of this season at second base. Face and polish, what are you going to see? You're going to see that. You're going to see a real good slider. I mean, fastball's going to be right around 90, but the slider is the off speed pitch that he's most comfortable with. Colwick wasn't ready for that one. I think a lot of times lefty facing the righty, you assume in the off speed they're going to go change up, but he'll wrap that slider around your feet. No, and one right field, that's down. Bradfield's going to come in, and the pinch hitter, Colwick, delivers. 
It's 5-3 now in the six with one down. That has to feel good there, KP. Again, starting third baseman at the beginning. Gets a fastball down and away and is able to just drive it exactly where it's pitched. Not trying to do too much. That's, that's what I like about it, okay? So pinch hitter coming into a spot like this. In the back of Colwick's mind, he knows if I hit it in the seats, we're tied. But shortens up right there after swinging through a slider and just punches it to right field and gets Vandy back within two. Now Isaiah Thomas and some life from Vanderbilt. Again, their bullpen's done a nice job keeping in this game. Look out now because this guy can jump ship really quick. Oh. Thomas may have the best raw power of anybody on the field right now. There's a lot of swing and miss, but as far as just the ability to hit the baseball out of sight, this guy can do it about as well as anybody. 60 strikeouts on the season against nine walks. Keegan at second, Colwick at first. Got one to hit, a little blooper, shallow center, and it looks like Jones is going to be there to make the play. With the wind where it is tonight, Jones playing very shallow. And the big second out. Watch the execution of this pitch. Perfectly placed inside. Don't let his hands get extended at all. Ball leaked in. Yeah. He jammed himself right there. I think, that's, again, that's that's a big guy at the plate. That's what you want. That's the fortunate miss right there yeah. because he was trying to go two seamer away, and that one cut a little bit, came in on the hands of Thomas and tied him up. Now Parker Nolan. And this one to short, and it's through. Crafton couldn't get it. Rounding third, Keegan. He is in there as the throw is cut off. Uh, RBI for Parker Nolan in a one run game. Andy again, not trying to do a lot with it. Going the other way right here. Fastball attacking early. You get it, you barrel it just on a line through the infield. But again, what I love about this play is we see a lot. The trail runner always going to try to get the cutoff. Stay at second. Make him throw the lead runner out. Instead, Colwitz, by staying at second, you continue the rhythm. Now 5-4, runners at first and second, two outs. And the catcher, C.J. Rodriguez. Two runs in the inning for Vanderbilt. Gets the call, strike one. This is a lot of folks would wonder how much does Jacob Polish have in the tank, having just thrown three plus innings. Um, Good to go. Yeah, they're going to need him to have some of the yeah. tank. I'll tell you that. For Stanford to have a chance, Polish has to go out and get you probably six outs. Second baseman was standing right there in the race to the bag, and he will beat Parker Nolan. They get some offense going. They had some hits. The pinch hit by Colwick helped. They're into the bullpen. We got a new ball game through six, five, four, Cardinal. Good night in Omaha for this elimination game, Stanford and Vanderbilt. And it's 5-4. After spotting the Cardinal a 4 nothing lead and making three errors, Vanderbilt is back in it. And the next pitcher following Nick Maldonado is the big righty, 35, Chris McElvain. 19th appearance, 392 ERA, and another big strikeout guy, 51 of those, 22 walks. He's thrown an inning so far, went an inning in the game against Arizona. In fact, closed that one out. One inning, one hit. Didn't walk anybody, punched out two. Maldonado, McElvain, Murphy are probably, we've already seen Maldonado, but McElvain, Murphy. In an ideal world for Scott Brown, those are the only two names that you hear for Vanderbilt on the mound, the balance of this game. You know, you want to be a fortune teller and you're a Vandy fan, you're looking at crystal ball, and if you can get the comeback and get a win, you've got Rocker, and then you got Lighter, and you have the experience at least that Christian Little has now stepped on the mound here. First pitch from McElvain is down. Ball one. It'll be Christian Robinson, Nick Brucer, and Drew Bowser. They've had the leadoff man on the last three innings. Mm. 
Mm. That was hit hard. It's one of the few ballparks, actually, where you don't have the screen That's all the down. way around the infield, huh? Yeah, it just goes to the end of the yeah. dugout. I'd like to see it go further. Certainly become a staple around the major league ballparks and has certainly saved a lot of people. McElvain pounding the strike zone. The next one to Robinson. Got him swinging and a good start for McElvain. Oh, he tipped it. Vanderbilt, too, getting into that Stanford bullpen and has just not been a strength for the Cardinal. A 5.06 ERA this season, which is next to NC State's the second worst in the field of eight. All right, time to elevate. Press the reset button with the elevate, uh, with the high fastball. If he takes, then you go right back down there. With that breaking pitch. McElvain's a big sophomore, six foot two oh five out of Thompson Station, Tennessee. Got him there. Easy chase. 93. Eduardo all over that. Get it up. Two foul balls down with the breaking pitch. It's as far as you're going to go, McElvain has a really good. Four seam fastball up in the zone. We saw it the other night, and we're seeing it again right here. Those hands stay low. There's no way you can catch up to that. Spun a breaking ball out of the zone to Nick Bruiser. He's the first baseman. Drew Bowser, the third baseman, on deck. Seventh inning elimination game between these two. Pitched in the NCAA regional clinching win over Georgia Tech, and he struck out six. Good location on that fastball at 94. Watch Jason Gonzalez at third base. He's way off the line here with McElvain's fastball. They're just counting on the odds just being greater 5 6 hold than down the line. Love the aggressiveness on defense there. Especially with a right handed pitcher left handed pitcher different story. I want him closer to the line but right now five six hole play the odds. Three one count. Rooster 11 homers 34 runs batted in on the season for the senior. Right field off the end of the bat's going to drop. <laughs> Tell you what fellas. There hasn't been a one two three inning yet. Nope. Against the Cardinal. And here's an exciting player in Drew Bowser, the third baseman. That double to right, which was really a fly ball misplayed because of the wind. And then a walk, he scored a strikeout. Good off field hitter. He will go to right with power. Saw him hit a home run in the Super Regional high off the scoreboard in right field. Cardinal team that during the pandemic shortened season really struggled. They were 5 and 11 in 2020. And Esker were able to right the ship this year 
former shortstop there, hit 350 at six RBIs in that 87 College World Series, and he's looking to get his team back to the finals. Runner's not going, the throw behind him, and that's not in time. And Stanford's already done this a few times already, the fake steal. And you see the, those are the codes that are given on a daily basis, different signs. You see a lot of universities doing this. Now, that's part of the steals. Give me a fake, hard two steps and then get back. He won't do it this time. I buy him two and two. And you'll see that a lot with runners at first and third. This time there is no runner at third, but it's just to see who's covering up the middle if there is a stolen base. Right there, it's just a mess a little bit with the catcher. Maybe you'll steal a pitch because he has to come up from a strong position. Bridger stolen two bags. Not going. Oh, that's there outside, and then he throws behind him. But you see it right there. So CJ comes out of his of his position to be able to throw either to second or go to first. Maybe that was a pretty close pitch. Yeah. Yeah. It could have gone either way. Absolutely. I would bet he's running here. He goes, strike three, throw down. And he's out. His slide came up short. And they throw him out, strike him out, double play. Vanderbilt's defense a little better than it was early on. McIlvain, Maldonado, and the tag by Nolan. To the bottom half of the seventh in a one-run game at the College World Series. Strike him out, throw him out. Javier Vaz now up. Vanderbilt's attempt to come back continues. Spot him seven. The first pitch is fouled off. Kyle, you had said that he was going to run there, no doubt. One out, not a huge base dealing threat. Is that just a philosophy they have? One out? Um, no, I mean, I just thought three to you. I mean, you I trust him, maybe hoping that Bowser's going to put the ball in play right yep. there and, and give you a chance. And, Gap shot, you get a chance to score. I don't know. Just based on what we had seen, it felt like he was off and running. Yep. Baz Gonzalez back to the top of the order. Bradfield seems to come up a lot with two outs in this game. Really good pitch on the corner, and you can see the reaction from Huff behind the plate. Oh, two. One of these two teams will have their season end tonight. Vanderbilt 46 and 16, Stanford 39 and 16. Oh. Take. One thing that Javier does really well is work counts, especially when he's leading off an inning. Third inning ended up rolling over to the first baseman. Look out. Oh, that that yep. And that's going to put on a good athlete, the speedy runner, Javier Vaz, at first base. As he heads down to first, we got a game coming up, top of the hour. And there's the former UCLA Bruin, Trevor Bauer. To his own music. The Golden Spikes Award winner in 11, three-time All-American. They didn't win the World Series the year he and Cole were on that team. The runner-up in 2010. Start on ESPN2, Dodgers Padres. There was his catcher in college right there, Steve Rodriguez. Caught. Cole and Bauer on that UCLA team back in 2010. Now the volunteer assistant here at Stanford. All right, guys, different pitcher on the mound, yet it's a lefty. Same <laughs> philosophy. Doesn't change. And you know it's a speedster at first, and this is, a, this is the reason I say it. He takes an aggressive lead. We know this. Continue to play the game at home. Yeah. 
Bruiser. Up. Well, one of the great fakes of all time yeah. by Nick Bruiser at first. <laughs> Bruiser tried to <laughs> tried to get him sleeping right there. Pretended the ball had gone all the way to the backstop, and late on that one was Gonzalez. Jason rounded out and he struck out here in the nine spot. A hero in their first game. Looking for some contact. No more than that because with that quick step off, the same thing can happen with the pickoff. Cody Huff, by the way, he has thrown out 16 of 46. Yeah, make sure you slide into that base. Keep your arms with you. That was the pitch. The pitch that Jason can handle is the one middle down with the type of uppercut swing that he has. If you elevate well, setting him up soft down and away and then go up and in, you can get him. Healthy lead for Vaz on the one two. Here it comes, and that is going to go into the seats. Now you have him set up. That's a soft away. Almost the same spot. Mm -hmm. Here go. Only twice this year when trailing after six if they come back. They've got two in the sixth and two in the fourth as they throw it back over. They trail this one for nothing for two. After four. And there's the starter, Quinn Matthews, become a cheerleader now. A throw over, and that time Vaz was uh -oh. caught off guard a little bit. Again, I just don't understand why they are taking such a big lead when they had to step off. Look, catches him again midair. We saw this earlier. He's safe. There's no reason. To be that far off. You can't change now, against a left handed pitcher that has a quick step move. Again, it should be a very quick replay. As the right hand hits the bag, it doesn't come off either. It was close, man. Yeah. It was real close. Love hit the dirt before it got to the hand. I think if it doesn't if the hit the dirt, low, I mean, if the throw is just a little bit lower, he's out. Bruiser just had to take the glove away to make the tag. But was it was it Vaz a few days ago that yeah. got caught was in the same spot where he was in the air? He was yeah, in the air. It's just, and if if you see that on the mound, you're trying to you're trying to figure out exactly what that time is because if you get him on the way up, it's it's a half step slower to get back to first base. Headsets are off and the call stands at first base. Vass will get back, breathe a little sigh of relief. And we focus back on Jason Gonzalez. One ball, two strike count, nobody out. Last half of the seventh go, go, go. inning. Go, go, go. On, Big number 99's got a ton of room in right center field as Robinson is playing straight up. We're going to get a timeout and a visit from Thomas Eager, the pitching coach. 
Alice was outstanding in that game against Arizona a couple nights ago when he gave him three and two thirds and shut the game down and ended the game. Wow. And that is the starter that? from game one Brendan oh, Beck. Oh, he's coming I'd in. See Beck up and throwing. He's, he's not playing catch. Oh, nope. He's coming in. Now they signal to bring in their best pitcher their starter their ace. Come on, baby. In a one two spot. Brendan Beck gets the call. And here we go when we come back to Omaha. Cardinal pushing the chips in right now bringing in our ace Brendan Beck started the opener of this College World Series against NC State five and two thirds inning seven hits six runs but just three earned punched out ten though the stuff was there but the offensive approach from NC State that day at least was enough to get the Wolfpack to game one win that was Saturday so we are three days rest coming off one hundred and nine pitches for the big right hander to come in right here. And Kyle 114 in the Super Regional against Texas Tech when he was unbelievable. Fastball changeup, and he was ahead of everybody in a game that Stanford rolled in. And we may have an injury here to Robinson out there in right field. Or Eddie Park, it looks like, who may be injured. So this will give Beck some time to continue to get loose. Esker's gone out there with him. And this is a Big deal. So the leadoff hitter and left fielder appeared as if he was walking to be taken out of the game. Brock Jones, but it looks like they are going to yeah, they are. bring in a substitute for Eddie Park. So he is out of the game, and Grant Burton is coming in. And Jones has now sprinted over to left field. Looks like Grant Burton is going to be the center fielder. Obviously, there was no ball that was hit in his direction, and it may have been just the last put out. Chess pieces are all moving some because they wanted to some because of injury. Brendan Beck now who follows in his brother's footsteps Tristan who was a great pitcher for Stanford now in the Giants organization at the major league level called on for the second time out of the bullpen and he's got a one two count to Jason Gonzalez. Took one pitch, and that's it for Gonzalez. It's it's really interesting timing right there. I mean, Beck has a ton more swing and miss really than anybody else in the Stanford staff. And I, I don't know if, if it was intentional to say, all right, if we get to two strikes, we're going to go to Beck because we know there's more swing and miss there. But there's definitely more swing and miss there than there is with Polish, especially if you're left on right. So good timing right there to bring in the big right-hander. Gets the rare opportunity to get a strikeout by throwing one pitch. So we've certainly seen something like this at the College World Series where the ace comes in and tries to give some length. And knowing Beck, he's one of those guys that would reach out to David Esker and say, I am good to go. When you need me, I'm in. A 
That's mom and dad right there. For the speedy Bradfield. Really good pitch on the corner at 94. He Correct. stole that one. And Cody Huff behind the plate. Watch the left shoulder just bring it in. Boom. Runner goes. Bradfield sees that go by, throw down. Safe. They say that Vaz got the hand in there. Really good throw from Cody Huff, but Vaz steals the base. On a combination right there, not only was it on the move, it wasn't a great jump, but it was a curveball. Vaz has enough speed, gets the second base right there, now in scoring position for Enrique Bradfield Jr., who already has two hits in the game. Great throw from Huff, very close play, but Vaz picks up steal number three. And now Brendan Beck on a 2-1. Four. You can do that too. You can take that four seam fastball, elevate it right there. Beck is a four pitch guy. Fastball, two different breaking balls, and a changeup. But that fastball elevated with purpose right there. Beck's older brother, his mother, sister all went to Stanford. You see Bradfield's numbers with runners in scoring position outstanding. Here it comes, and he fouls that one off. Brendan Beck was a shortstop in high school. He didn't start pitching like his older brother until he was a senior in high school. Got him chasing, but the ball gets away. Bradfield didn't know it. Now he goes down to first, a high throw. Oh, if Enrique Bradfield had seen it, that would have been a little different, perhaps. Maybe Huff takes his time because he realizes Bradford isn't running, but a high throw. There are two down, and down to third base goes Vaz. And Cody Huff knows he's got a little bit more time right here. Still about air melt. Tawa was in the right place right there. <laughs> Dad's saying run. We've talked about that millions of times at home. Even Bradfield Jr., you see him right there frustrated with himself. Now Beck, one out away from getting out of this, he gets the two-hole hitter, Carter Young, who moves from the right to the left side. Big lead for Vaz down here at third. In case the ball gets away. Good pitch there at 94. Velocity is real good right now for Brendan Beck. Now this is Carter Young's best side right now. First two at-bats from the right side. Got to respect the power here. Friday night starter, Pac-12 pitcher of the year, Beck, 0-1. 1-1. and 1. Filthy, 81 on the corner. Now the ace, advantage. Now this is where Vaz has to be alert at third base because if he's going to throw another curveball, should be even lower to try to get the chase. Pressure's on Huff to block. Swinging and Beck 
Answers the call coming out of the bullpen. It'll stay 5-4. Another runner stranded for Vanderbilt. We got action now. We got action. Elliott Avent, NC State, the Wolfpack 2 0. Get the winner of this one, Mississippi State. Chris Lamonis has already told us the entire state's going to come to watch that game Friday night. Will it be Texas or Virginia? And already having gone home, Tennessee and Arizona. Who's your guy? Uh oh, Huskers. Nebraska quarterback in the Huskers house. In the house. Repping the Philadelphia Phillies throwback John Crook jerseys. Even suit maybe earlier than the Crocker. Has there been to a football game in Lincoln? Yeah. Have not. Nope. Waiting for the invite. Yep. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> So much for that, Carl. Yep, we tried. He wasn't biting. Uh -huh. McIlvain keeps throwing. And here's Tommy Troy, and that ball is fouled off. So is Beck now the guy the rest of the game? Feels like it. Yeah, if you're going to bring Beck into that spot, I think it's his game to finish. One and two, roller to the shortstop. Young got him by half a step, and it was close. Boy, good speed from Tommy Troy. Guys, you can appreciate the sound on that one as well. You can hear the ball beat. Right there. Good call. Jeff Hendricks at first base making it. Okay, so we talked about this earlier in this College World Series. That can be the difference between front of the base, middle of the base, right there. More middle of the base when he came down. We've seen a few guys at the very front of that bag, and, and that, in one that close, that can be the difference. Oh, and two. Grant Burton is in the on deck circle. He came in as a defensive replacement when Eddie Park, the left fielder, was taken out. Chasing boy McIlvain two quickies here in the eighth. The NCAA College World Series is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? The Capital One blows me up. Says that Garner thing's not working. Maybe we could get you to do this. Any chance? To go to the bullpen, right? <laughs> Bring in Raft. Tell you what, with the wind, the way it was blowing out earlier, the way it's still blowing in right now. Mike Shea doing a great job with that. Drone. He's got it. Really? Yeah. It's tough. You ever tried to fly a drone? No. Yes. You yeah. Have you? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a disaster. Right? <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> it's not really a drone anymore. <laughs> oh. <laughs> now that's better. That's there we better. go. A little turn right there to the right or left. Balls behind somebody who hasn't had a plate appearance tonight. 3 0, and then you get it to Tawa and Brock Jones. So it's a big out here for Chris McElvain. Grant Burton at 3.33. He did appear in 20 games, and that's a four pitch walk. I thought we were going to have our first 1 2 3 inning, and that's a no no. A lot of traffic that the Vanderbilt pitchers have created for themselves or had created by some misplays in the field. There's been at least one base runner in every inning. Several have had two, if not three. And there's Brock Jones having another one of those nights when he hits. 
He hits in bunches. And that's going to get through into right field. Tawa delivers, breaks on at second. And here he comes again, Brock Jones. Now it may be Luke Murphy, the lefty time. And here comes number four. That's Tim Corbin out of the Vanderbilt bullpen. And we will have a pitching change here. What a chance for Brock Jones. He's got his ace on the mound. And we're going southpaw. We'll come back to Omaha. 5 4 eighth, two outs. Lights, camera, action. What a moon tonight. No matter where you are in the country, take a look at the sky. It's beautiful tonight. And it is framed by the Bob Carey Pedestrian Bridge. Got a lot of folks on it tonight walking. Eddie was out there earlier today. So were you. Walking the dog. And it is the lefty, Hugh Fisher. Righty Murphy was warming up. They go with Hugh Fisher. And as Kyle said during the break, this is not a comfortable at bat for the left handed hitting Brock Jones. No, it's this is big league stuff. I mean, the only issue with Fisher is can he keep it in the zone? But it's left on left fastball can be 95, 96. You can see a 97 and a, a slider that is tough for the left handers to stay in on. But that's the reason he's in there, is that guy right there. Three more hits today for Brock Jones. Homer in the third, single in the fourth. Doubled in the sixth. The Little League World Series a couple years ago, and that Reese Roussel kid from Louisiana had like a record setting amount of hits. This is the sort of zone that Brock Jones is locked into at the next level. A big home run to right field for Jones after reaching on an error, then a single and a double. And a huge at bat for Hugh Fisher. That walk to Grant Burton sitting out there at second base. McIlvain. Unable to get him, and then a single from Tawa. And a 1 0. Didn't get it. 2 0. Mr. Grand Slam himself, Cody Huff, is on deck at two of those in one game this year. He challenged him, and that had a little rise, or at least appeared to have some rise on it. Eighteen home runs, sixty one RBIs for number seven. Challenged him again, ninety five, and we're back in a two two count. Stay up there. Try to trick him with a slider right now. Stay up there. Power versus power. How about the ability to hold up on that? Oh, some strong hands right there, man, because he, he started and then recognized. Recognize spin a little bit. Base runners, be run base runners will be running here. Now you got to come back with it. Grant Burton off second. Tawa will be taken off from first. The three-two. That's down, and they are now loaded. Two fastballs went away from it. And the Cardinal have a runner at every base. Probably going to be the only guy that Fisher faces, but he's in just to face a left hander. So slider misses, then fastball just misses. Now he comes back, pumps two really good elevated fastballs to get it back to 2 2. 
Really good take right there from Jones to get it to 3-2 and then the slider down and out of the zone. Did you not like the pitch selection? I did not. 2-2, two, two, I wanted that fastball again. He already beat him twice. Just elevated a little bit more. Saw mano a mano right there. He had it at 95. I think Brock would have gone after it. Slider did him a favor. That's why I said he had to go back to it 3-2. And here comes the righty Luke Murphy with the bases loaded the game in the balance in the eighth. Welcome back the Cardinal they have uh, seen Brock Jones have some big games but Cody Huff had a huge night against UC Irvine when he went yard and yard with the bases loaded both times two grand slams against Irvine in game four of the Stanford Regional. We only bring that up because he's coming up with the bases loaded. There's something called the do factor also. Look at that 0 for 4 with one strikeout. Cleanup hitter not doing any cleaning up this evening. It's another right hander that Vanderbilt really does trust. Luke Murphy 3 and 1 with a 275 but it's been out of the bullpen consistently this year 56 strikeouts and 36 innings just 13 walks 56 in 36. Sixth pitcher that Vanderbilt has used after starter Christian Little came out early. Fifth pitcher I should say. And here's Huff. Burton down there at third Tawa at second he had the big single after the walk Jones walks and here's Huff in a one run game in the eighth. Ooh, <laughs> 96. And that got on him in a hurry. Major league feel to it, doesn't it? When you've got guys routinely coming out of the bullpen throwing 96 miles an hour. First from the left, now from the right. 0 oh, 2, and he chased it and he protected that. That was by him. And he missed location big yeah. time also. I mean, again, Rodriguez wanted this one up. That 96 plays up, man. We've seen some uh, some velo so far here in Omaha and that one right there. It's just a short arm whip right through. Wind continues to blow in on the 0 2 wants it up and he spoils another one. So four straight fastballs. From Luke Murphy. Do you mix it up or you just stick with it? If you do, you have to be careful he doesn't spike it with the runner at third base. He did mix it up. May have missed location. The result is all that matters. They leave him loaded and 3-4-5 coming up for Vanderbilt. Just like that, he cut it to a 4-2 game. Now 5-4 as you're watching the NCAA College World Series. It's presented by Capital One. Bottom of the eighth inning, they leave them loaded. Man, they've had some opportunities tonight, Stanford. Last count was 11 men left on base. And the first pitch from Beck, strike one. Higgins Homer wasn't his only hit. He had a single. He has scored two of the four. Chasing, and this is an impressive performance so far from Brendan Beck. He's got the good stuff right now, and it's also going to play up. I mean, he's coming out of the bullpen. He knows that it's his ball game to finish right here. 96 mile an hour fastball to end the last inning. I've never seen Brendan Beck throw a baseball that fast. 0 oh 2 will not chase. 1 and 2. 
Mentioned Tristan, his older brother, is with the Giants organization during the pandemic and the COVID shutdown. They worked out with each other often. So you're bending the ear of a professional baseball player, let alone another Stanford guy. And the idea is to continue to use your pitches, and he does there to pick up strikeout number four. Right back to that hard breaking ball. And they're just, they're not seeing it. They're not seeing it yet from back. Running back came in. He inherited the Jason Gonzalez plate appearance with two strikes. He threw a strike to get him. He's now striking out Bradfield, Young, and Keegan. Ted Cole, a pinch hit in the sixth and got a single to right. Yeah, you're starting to feel like I'm not sure they're going to be able to get to Brandon Beck the way they're swinging and not identifying. So he squares. That's a called strike. Ball. Oh, hey now. Five up, five down, all via the strikeout. Brendan, Brendan Beck came in the, the game last inning. Here, here's a K zone package already because he's punched out five. Everybody he's faced now he came into a one two count, struck out Gonzalez, then gets Bradfield, Carter Young, Dominic Keegan, and Take Colwick just takes a slider right there. Five up, five down, five punched out. Isaiah Thomas next to play the Brendan Beck game. Makes contact. Short hop fielded. Nice play by Adam Crampton. Very efficient inning for Brendan Beck. They're three outs away. Their lead is one. Will it grow in the ninth? Here we go. We take a look at our Capital One rewarding performance. And the Brock star, Brock Jones, home run in the third inning. After that, all he did was single, double, walk. And by the way, he had reached base in the first on an error. So he has been on all five times. That is tonight's Capital One rewarding performance. Doesn't matter if you're on the back bench, front bench, he has got it done. <laughs> Here's Christian Robinson to start, and that one sails away from Luke Murphy. Boy, I don't know how you come up with a game plan to deal with Brendan Beck if you're Vanderbilt's offense. I know this, the first step's got to be, let's only be down one when he goes back to the mound. Just power arms out of both bullpens tonight. And it's, I mean, that's David Esker pushing everything in sure. right here and saying, all right, we'll, we'll figure about Friday if, if we get to Friday. But we got to try to figure out today first. That's the reason that Beck is in quick out from Murphy. Here tonight. And it's funny, you know, Esker, relatively new to it here. He's obviously got experience as a player, but that is the one thing you hear from O'Connor said the same thing at Virginia. You don't worry about the next game. We got to get to the next game, so let's just win this one and then we'll figure out the next one. Yeah, you, you, you could beat today, you're doing something totally different on Friday. <laughs> you, you don't have to worry about right. who's pitching on Friday if you're headed home. Right. I, Totally understand. And you know that if you're coming out of loser's bracket, it's going to take yep. a heroic outing or two from guys that maybe haven't done it during the course of the year. Beck got through the top of the order. And he'll deal with six, seven, and eight when he comes back to the mound. The 0 2 is a little wide to Nick Brucer. This will be one of those if it ends this way that the Vanderbilt folks will look back on and think we didn't really help ourselves at all. There's a strike three. The three errors to start this thing and they were in a big hole early. And not only that they didn't help themselves today and they didn't help themselves when they lost game two as, as, as well. And, and again it's 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 a team that has to be able to to play well on both ends of the baseball not just on the defensive side game two they weren't aggressive on the bases. And as you just saw there rocker and lighter obviously if it ends here this is the last time you'll see them in Vanderbilt uniforms. 
here both projected to go in the top 10 of this upcoming draft three weeks from now that's in there for a strike one and one one and one Rockers and the lighters. Oof. You're right, Eddie. That that feels like 96, 97 when it says 93 on the gun. Two and two to Drew Bowser, the third baseman. He gone. 95. And now it's on his shoulders, and he has worked his butt off for this moment, trying to get his team to another game here in Omaha. Brendan Beck back to the bump. Kind of a wide view, big picture thought here. Back-to-back -back College World Series titles, South Carolina, Oregon State. For each. Van Vanderbilt won it in 19, they won it in 14, and they're going to have to do something here if they want to go back-to-back. -back. Of course, last year we didn't have an event. And it ain't going to be easy. Brendan Beck's been ridiculous as he has struck out five. First pitch gets the call on the corner. May have been off, but he picks up strike one. And that makes a great pitcher even greater. Parker Noland, Rodriguez, and Vaz. There you have it. That's two. The hammer just showed up. Eddie, you're on that bench at Vanderbilt. What are you saying? What are you trying to get your hitters to do? Is there anything? Just stay focused, look middle away, because right now he does not want to throw anything in to give up a home run. It's going to make you earn it. On the ground, and no one to play at first base, and there is Beck to cover. Bruiser to Beck, and that keeps the leadoff man off. What a play, Nick Bruiser. That's a fine play right there. Again, watch where Bruiser starts. Great positioning, goes to his right, smothers that baseball oh. in a perfect throw over to Beck, who's covering there. That's a game saver right there. Beck all in one movement. Gloves, right foot on the bag, off the bat, looked like a leadoff single, but nifty work by Bruiser for the first out. What a throw from Nick Bruiser at first, and that strike one. What a throw he made. That's that's going to make Brock Jones happy. That's quarterback to wide receiver, a tight end cutting across the middle, and he nailed him. Right-handed first baseman make that play? I don't think so. I don't think so. Because watch his yeah, all-in-one motion. That's a tough one right he there. He goes down glove side, then all-in-one motion can pirouette and throw a strike. There was a lot, a lot that had to go right there, and it all did. I mean, remember, this is a team that not they did not have fall practice to do the PFPs. Probably a lot less reps yeah. than any other team that's in this tournament right now. A senior Nick Bruiser, big first out, one and two to C.J. Rodriguez. Brock Jones, look out again. He cuts in front of his right left fielder, gets cut in front of by Grant Burton, the center fielder. The Jones has been involved in two of those close plays. This time as the left fielder, the first one is the center fielder, and you can see Burton like, I can't hear anything. One out away from advancing to the game against NC State. Brendan Beck has retired. All 80s faced. Strike one. Javier Vaz, last chance.
Of the eight that he's gotten, he has struck out five of them. He's located every pitch where he's wanted it since he's come into this game. And when he's missed, he's missed where he's wanted to miss. Well, this is as good as I have seen back. Two balls, two strikes. Overthrew it, three and two. Power hitter Jason Gonzalez has been replaced in the on deck circle. Still alive, Vanderbilt, Spencer Jones is coming to the plate. For a rare walk and a potentially costly mistake from Brendan Beck. Spencer Jones came in to pinch hit against NC State the other day. They threw him a cutter on the first pitch. Ground ball, second base. Three home runs, 10 RBIs. 87 at bats. He is six foot seven. And there is some power in this bat. And that's going to bring Thomas Eager out for a quick conversation with Brendan Beck. I think it's just just scouting report. You get a pitch hitter up there. I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page. The three, the two-two pitch was the odd one there from Beck because he'd had, as you guys just pointed out, such great control, and then that breaking pitch didn't break. Kind of cast it a breaking ball. It got underneath it. And you get a guy in Jones who, I mean, is super talented. Was in the starting lineup for some of the year this year, but we, we talked raw power and the raw power that Isaiah Thomas has. This guy's got it too. Two and two thirds, five punch outs from back has not given up a hit. The only base runner, the two out walk to Baz this inning. Another out for Stanford, and they'll play Friday against NC State. Spencer Jones trying to keep Vanderbilt's hopes alive. <laughs> Owen one presents a big strike zone. Just off one ball, one strike. Outfield has to play deep right now. Yep. Vaz tying run at first base, potential tying run at first. Six seven, 225 pound sophomore, one and one. That one is in the hole. Fielded, long throw, not in time, and it gets by the first baseman. Crampton short hopped Bruiser, and there are men at first and third. Not sure if Crampton could have just eaten that ball. Instead, he threw it across the diamond, and here's Vanderbilt with runners on the corners and two down. Yeah, this is the ball you just have to eat right here. You're going, you're playing up the middle. Good attempt right there, but now you have Vaz at third base, and so many things can happen. Tying run now for uh, at go ahead run at first tying run at third. You got a speedster in Enrique Bradfield Jr. at the plate. Corners have to play in. And you have to watch the drag here. Second baseman playing deep and up the middle at second. 
Enrique Bradfield, the leadoff hitter. Two singles tonight. Beck throwing pitch 38. And that's into right field. Vanderbilt has tied it to third base. And wow, Enrique Bradfield, the biggest hit of his Vanderbilt career. They tie it up with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Go back to his last at bat where he struck out on a curveball in the dirt. He was yelling from the dugout, letting all of his teammates know he'll throw the curveball. First pitch, he gets that curveball, and he doesn't miss it. The first error Stanford made has hurt him. The walk issued by Brendan Beck to Javier Vaz. Now you wonder what Beck has left in the tank. He's been so good, and it's Carter Young with a chance to win it for Vanderbilt. Beck sits down the first 80 faces, punched out five of the eighth, and the two out walk. Backside ground ball. There you and have Bradfield right there that ties it up. There you have there you have Roberto Vaz on the left and Bradfield Senior on the right. For Carter Young, Spencer Jones at third base. Ball one. Down to second base, Jogs. Bradfield. Carter Young 0 for 3 with a walk. Huge hit for Enrique Bradfield. Ties this game up in the bottom of the ninth. Vanderbilt, if you're just tuning in, trailed this game four to nothing. It was four to two after four. Five to two after the top of the six, five four. And they have tied it here in the bottom of the ninth. Against the Pac-12 Pitcher of the Year, Brendan Beck. Oh, he sailed it over his head! The Cardinal are gonna lose on a wild pitch from Beck. Spencer Jones scores. Vanderbilt alive. They win it 6-5. What happened? Oh, heartbreak for Brendan Beck and Stanford. And the Commodores get two in the bottom of the ninth to win. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Beck, who was so good for the first eight guys. And you go two out, walk a couple singles. And, and we saw this was a breaking ball. Listen, it's human. It's late at night, and, and if your hands get a little bit slick, that's what you're going to get sometimes with that curveball. He did it earlier in this yep. inning where it wasn't quite that high. This one just squirts out of his hand. Nothing Cody Huff can do. And, and I mean, two outs, nobody on. It looked like this ball game was over. Sure and Vanderbilt's did. still alive. It just goes to show you how many ways you can score from third base. Yeah. Again, 90 feet makes a difference in this. The improbable has just happened here. That, that was, again, with two outs, I did not think that Vanderbilt had a chance the way that Beck was pitching. This is a heartbreaker. You feel terrible for Stanford and in particular Brendan Beck who came out of the bullpen and was lights out. As Kyle had said as good as you've ever seen him throw a 96 miles an hour. And it's Vanderbilt keeping the dream alive of going back to back. NC State will get Vanderbilt. We're going to get some rocker. You're wow. going to get some Kumar rocker. Tomorrow night, Texas and Virginia. And this one you won't forget for a long time. They win it by scoring two in the bottom of the ninth. Enrique Bradfield had a huge hit. And then the wild pitch scored Spencer Jones. And remember, he was a pinch hitter. Incredible. That's Kyle Peterson, Eduardo Perez, Chris Budden, our entire crew. What a night here in Omaha. Let's see if it continues with the baseball. Here's Dave Fleming.